Nick, you good? Good to go, Mayor. All right. Glenn, you all set? Yeah, you're good. Um, I'll go live if it works, but I'll record it for posterity and upload it after if it doesn't kick back on. Okay. Acknowledged. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 18th Township Committee meeting. We will now salute the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, Republic. for which it stands, yeah. one nation, nation. under God, God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice, justice for all. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to recognize two individuals yeah. who have now lost yeah. recently. So we'll have a moment of silence for William Harry Shell, who passed on April 24th of this year. He was a Maplewood resident for 55, 59 years. And he also served as our township prosecutor and was a district leader in the Maplewood Democratic Committee. And also Edward Barone, who passed away just this past Sunday, May 16th. He served on the Maywood Township Committee for 12 years, from 1976 to 1988, and was also the Municipal Court Judge for nine years, from 1988 to 1997. Please join me in a moment of silence in memory of William and Edward. Thank you. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, this is the state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building, by mailing annual notice of regular meetings for 2021 to the news record and Star Ledger in December 2020, and by filing said notice in the office of the township. Ms. Adams? Here. Mr. Daffis? Present. Mr. DeLuca? Here. Mr. Lembrick? Here. Mayor McGeehee? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires that all meetings of public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7A provides that the governing body has a discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the active participation of the public at any meeting, and whereas desire the governing body to comply with the provision of this act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Township Committee. The Township of Maywood does hereby prohibit, except as set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observation of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGeehee? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. And before we get started, and I do the agenda for this evening, I would like to make a public statement. As we heard from the governor yesterday, regarding Executive Order 241, eliminating the requirement of masks in outdoor public spaces. We as well will be following that ordinance in the Township of Maplewood. His order reaffirms that the masking requirement in indoor spaces remains in workplaces, but clarifies that individuals at small gatherings and private residents are not required to wear masks indoors. So outdoor public spaces do not include childcare centers, other childcare facilities, youth summer camps, and public, private, and peripheral school premises. And that also includes elementary and secondary schools. So therefore, in the Township of Maplewood, we are now eliminating the requirement of masks in outdoor public spaces. Thank you. I would now like to move on and go through our agenda for this evening. First, we will have a proclamation in regards to Emergency Medical Services Week by Mr. Limbrick. Then we'll have a presentation to the governing body of Girl Scout Troop 20248 regarding the Hudson, Estes Hudson Greenway project. We'll then have an appointment 
for boards and committees to our swimming pool advisory committee, and that will be presented by Mr. Limbrick. We will then move on to our monthly employee spotlight, which is Michelle Wellesley. Uh, and we're very happy because this is a great opportunity to really recognize the work that she's done, especially with our seniors. That will be presented by Mr. Daffis. Then we will continue in our theme of introducing our new police officers to the community. And Mr. Limbrick will introduce Officer Smith to the community. And we will hear from Officer Smith as well. At that point, we'll move on to our first public comment. This is agenda item number 10. This is on agenda items only and limited to three minutes. Tonight, we have three ordinances on final passage. The first ordinance relates to establishing procedures for off-duty employment of police officers from Maplewood. The second ordinance uh, discuss the uh, Maple Crest Park hours. So we wanna make them consistent with other parks in the area. The third and final ordinance is related to, to establishing a bank cap for our township. We are now have also two ordinances that are in, on introduction. The first ordinance is related to fees and the second ordinance is related to our table of organization and reestablishing that so it's consistent with our table in salaries and positions. We'll then have reports from our departments. And then also we'll then have our administrative reports. We'll hear from our township administrator, Mr. Gimes, our township attorney, Mr. Desiderio, and our township clerk, Ms. Fritzen. We'll move on to agenda item number 18, where we'll hear reports from elected officials. We'll hear from Mr. Daffis, then Mr. DeLuca, Ms. Adams, and Mr. Limbrick. Tonight, agenda item 19 is eight discussion items. The Juneteenth flag raising, the waiver online e-check fee, revision to our tree ordinance, a discussion on Maple's cannabis ordinance, our Jitney commuter parking fees, support for New Jersey uh, A52075336 one by Mr. Daffis, and an update from Mr. Luca regarding affordable housing. And then finally, we'll have a discussion on the current condition of our fields in the township. Our consent agenda has a total of 20 items. We'll be awarding a contract for lifeguard services. We'll also be amending a resolution regarding our public health ca uh, capacity. We'll also be appointing our uh, municipal emergency management coordinator. We will also appoint our new probationary officer, Mr. Smith. We'll award a contract for the purchase of a front end loader. We'll also establish a resolution in regards to the rates of off-duty police officers. We'll award a contract in regards to our new budget and management software system. And we'll also uh, re send, retain uh, a new design firm for a block study, as well as for uh, plans for a spray park in Maplecrest. We'll have a resolution authorizing the cancellation of unredeemed checks. And we'll also have an authorization of the purchase of two Ford police vehicles. We'll move on to hear about bills and claims. And then we'll also appoint two part-time summer interns. We'll have an authorization of our affordable assistant grant for an affordable housing unit, and also an affordable housing unit for unit 107. We'll have the approval of regular session minutes as well as closed session minutes as well. So after that, we'll be the end of our consent agenda. We'll then move on to public comment on any subject matter. And then finally, hopefully before 11 p.m., we will adjourn. So with that, without further ado, we'll now move on to our agenda and we'll have our proclamation read by Mr. Limbrick regarding emergency medical services. Week. Mr. Limbrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's my pleasure to uh, read the proclamation of the Township of Maplewood uh, declaring this week Emergency Medical Services Week. And it's also my pleasure uh, this evening to, uh, to welcome uh, a few uh, great uh, members of the Emergency Medical Services team locally. We have with us uh, Deputy Chief of uh, the Maplewood Fire Department, Chris Ariema. Uh, and also our clerk, Elizabeth Fritzen, 
uh, who is a, uh, an EMT uh, for many years in her community in Springfield. So uh, I'm going to read the proclamation. Whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas this is an extraordinary time for our medical uh, emergency medical responders and EMTs who are dealing with the coronavirus pandemic on the front lines, and this continues to be very challenging uh, for all of these first responders, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate for those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, and others, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams, whether care, career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training, continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas our township relies upon not only the members of our Maplewood Fire Department, but the generosity of those residents and businesses that provide the financial support to fund EMS equipment operations and training. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Frank McGeehee, Mayor of the Township of Maplewood, and the Maplewood Township Committee do hereby proclaim May 16th through 22nd, 2021, as Emergency Medical Services Week in Maplewood, with the theme, this is EMS, caring for our communities. And we encourage the community to observe this week with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities to celebrate all members of the emergency medical services that serve our community. Thank you, Mr. Lembrick. And uh, Ms. Fritzen, thank you for your service. Thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate you all recognizing me. <laughs> and uh, Deputy Chief Ariama, did you want to say anything on behalf of uh, of our, our Maplewood professional first responders? Sure. Just uh, just want to thank everybody. Um, you know, I know we do this every year, and and it's uh, it's very well appreciated. Uh, as we know, you know, EMS is a big part of the Maplewood Fire Department. Um, you know, we have ambulances, but uh, if one of our ambulances is not available, all of our guys that are on the fire engine or the fire truck, they're all uh, EMTs as well. So even if we don't have an ambulance, we can send a fire truck or fire engine and uh, give you about 80% of the same care that you get if uh, we had an ambulance, except we can't transport. So, um, you know, having all our guys as EMTs has, has uh, given us a wealth of experience and, uh, you know, makes us uh, better able to serve the residents. And uh, we're just very happy to be able to do what we do. So thank you. And Liz, you rock. <laughs> <laughs> we agree, Deputy Chief. Thank you. And as, as always, uh, please send our thanks and appreciation to, uh, to all of the uh, all of the great folks in the Maplewood Fire Department. We, we appreciate the work you do. Uh, and, and later on during my report, I'm going to be highlighting some of the work at the Maplewood Fire, some of the life-saving work the Maplewood Fire Department has done in, in just the past 24 hours or so uh, in our community to, to help folks uh, in, uh, in emergency situations. Uh, but Mr. Mayor, uh, moving on, I think I'm turning it back over to you uh, for a very special presentation. That's right, Mr. Lindbrick, and, and thank you again. And, and Deputy Chief, uh, you know, a year ago when we were in the thick of COVID, uh, the, the number of EMS runs that you and, and the firefighters did, the team was unbelievable. And uh, there were a lot of runs uh, and uh, we looked at those stats every month and, you know, thank goodness that we're almost on the other side here. Um, and thank you again for, you know, being part of that team to really keep our town moving and being safe. So. Thank you, Mayor. We, uh, we appreciate it. And, and uh, we always appreciate the support from, from the whole committee. Uh, you know, I, I hope there's residents watching, you know, we have top notch equipment, um, ambulances that are four wheel drive. So it doesn't matter what the weather is, we'll get to where we got to go, you know, best equipment out there. And uh, you know, last year, like you said, Mayor, it was a tough year, but uh, you guys were there, you had our backs, you supported us in getting equipment and supplies and whatever we needed to keep everybody safe. So thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Okay, we'll now move on to agenda item number six, which is uh, gonna be the highlight of my evening. 
And that's, we're gonna have a presentation uh, to not just the governing body, but to the whole community of Maplewood from Girl Scout Troop 20248. And we're gonna hear about the Essex Hudson Greenway Project. So I now like to yield the floor to the, to, to the scouts and we'll just uh, listen to your presentation. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Hello, my name is Ruby and I'm part of Girl Scout Troop 20248 and we are residents of Maplewood, New Jersey. The other members of the troop that are here are Ella, Eva, Alora, Lorelai, Lucy, Madeline, and Mariana. Today we will be telling you about the Essex Hudson Greenway Project. Hi, I'm Madeline. We are the Brunswick Project and we want to support the Essex Hudson Greenway. We want to support it because it sounded like it was cool and there were a lot of communities. It would also create more green space close to home. We can't support it on our own though. We need all the help we can get. Slides please. There are nine miles of unused land that runs through parts of Essex and Hudson County, but, what, but there are people trying to do something with this land. What if we transform this land into a walk slash bike path? It would be the perfect place to go out on a nice bike ride, walk your dog, go for a run, or just be out in nature. You can click the link which will take you to a website about how you can help. It's so, it would mean so much if you could help. We need this greenway because it is a once in a lifetime chance that we will not get again. It can support local small businesses as well as the community. This could be a great place for marathon training. I know someone who ran the NMIC marathon, so this could make training fun. Not only would it help runners, bikers, and hikers, it would also help the environment and the community. You could even walk or bike from Montclair to the ferry in Hoboken or, or Jersey City to go to New York City. How you can help. Now that you know this project is important, spread the word. You may see some door hangers and flyers popping all over Maplewood. Take a picture and share it with your friends, family, and community. Click the link to subscribe to this cause. You can get project updates and be able to volunteer. Check out this site and check out the volunteer box on the FAQ tab. This is a limited time offer, so if this land doesn't get sold, it might be sold to someone who has a different opinion and won't keep this a conserved green space. This concludes our slideshow. Because of the global pandemic, people have been reminded to get outside more. This project will provide access to a safe space and is good for our mental and physical health. Mayor McGeehee and the council, do you have any questions for the Girl Scouts about the Essex Hudson Greenway project? Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions uh, for the troop? I, I do, Mayor. Mr. Limbrick. Yes, I'm wondering if uh, maybe one of the scouts uh, could tell us uh, what the what the Girl Scout Troop 20248 is doing uh, to volunteer with the Greenway Project. What, what are you doing uh, to get involved in this project? Um, well, we're gonna like hang up flyers and um, like we're gonna give out pamphlets and like door hangers and stuff about the product and try to get it out there. That's great. So in addition to being here and doing this presentation now, you're gonna be raising awareness in the community to let everyone know about this and let them know how they can get involved. That's great. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Troop 20248. Thank you, Mr. Limbrick, and thank you, Troop, as well. I have a question for my colleagues. Um, if we were to pass tonight maybe a resolution in support of Girl Scout Troop 20248 that we could send to Governor Murphy's office in support, uh, could we do that tonight?
So yeah, I, I would I would think so. Okay. Is it, I, I think maybe it might also be something we could send to our uh, our district legislative district twenty seven representatives and perhaps also the uh, the county commissioners in Essex and Hudson counties. Good I idea. Completely, completely agree. So I'd like to make a motion that we uh, establish a resolution in support of the Essex Hudson Greenway project as well as the advocacy of Girl Scout Troop 20248 to see this project uh, fulfilled. I second. second. Oh, third. <laughs> <laughs> um, any further discussion? Hearing none, I, oh, it, further discussion, Ms. Adams. I was just gonna thank them. So um, thank you for not only are you guys all frighteningly accomplished at using Zoom, <laughs> Uh, better than a lot of adults we see on on our at our meetings, <laughs> including ourselves. Um, but I really appreciate your advocacy for this green initiative and the environment because it's crucial to your future. And so, thank you for all your work and continued work on it. Thank Lucy, you. thank you, Mayor McGee, Town Council, and those who are watching for letting us spend a few moments of your time. We hope we can count on you to help support the Essex Hudson Greenway project. Well, we definitely want to thank you for being here as well. And before you go anywhere, we want to go ahead and uh, if, there, if there's no further discussion, um, Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll so we can do that resolution. Sams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGeehee. Yes, thank you, Ms. Bredson. So uh, Troop 20248, we will work with uh, Ms. Lynn and, and we will uh, copy her on our correspondence of our resolution to Governor Murphy's office, uh, to Assemblywoman JC's office, to Assemblyman McKeon's office, and to State Senator uh, Cody's office. Uh, and also our, our uh, freeholders, as well as uh, our, our county exec, and others in Hudson County as well. So uh, we're with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and continue on our agenda. And now we are on agenda item number seven, where we'll be discussing boards and committees. And I'll yield the floor to Mr. Limbrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I have one uh, nomination for appointment tonight to uh, one of our volunteer boards and committees, uh, and that is Mr. Joshua Silverman to the Swimming Pool Advisory Committee. Uh, Mr. Silverman uh, has been coming to meetings now of the Swimming Pool Advisory Committee for the past couple of months. He's already uh, gotten involved with some of our uh, subcommittee work. Uh, the, the pool committee, uh, you know, li likes to get people to, to do some work even before they're appointed, uh, you know, to, to, to show that they're, uh, you know, they're, they're willing to put in the effort. So uh, Mr. Silverman has already done that. In addition to uh, doing the subcommittee work, he also, uh, he, he lives near the pool. So he's, he's actually been providing some good, uh, some good intel uh, and scouting on the uh, status of the uh, construction uh, projects over by the pool. Um, so I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Silverman and give him an opportunity to introduce himself. Uh, and uh, Ms. Silverman, maybe you can just tell us about why you're just joining uh, the Swimming Pool Advisory Committee. Uh, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Town Council. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. First of all, I need to ask, can you hear me? This is a new laptop. <laughs> yes, all can. right. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay, so um, I appreciate the chance to be on the pool advisory committee. Um, I have, I know this sounds very cliche, but I've loved swimming all my life. I grew up in Summit, New Jersey, uh, served as a lifeguard for that local town pool, um, was part of, of a local pool when I lived in Washington, DC. And uh, now that my wife and I have come from Hoboken to hopefully put down roots in this area, starting near the pool, hopefully somewhere nearby soon, you know, depending on how the housing market, of course, I do see the pool as being, you know, a, a big, important part of not just our family lives, but also of the local community. You know, even 
during COVID times when the pool was able to open in its limited capacity last summer, I just saw probably more neighbors than I saw anywhere else that year, not even just because of COVID. You know, the pool brings people together, gives people activities. It's good for exercise. And, you know, it's just good for getting people out in the sunshine. So the fact that I live close by um, provides a unique opportunity to match this interest uh, with a convenience. And I can't think of any better way to um, to help give back to the community than to do something that, all right, I'm here. Let's make use of that. All right, thank you, Mr. Silverman. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I'd like to uh, make a motion that, that the Township Committee appoint Joshua Silverman uh, to the uh, Maplewood Swimming Pool Advisory Committee. I'll second. second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Ritson, please follow the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes, thank you. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGee? Yes. And congratulations. And thank you. Thank you for the faith you put in me and uh, looking forward to seeing you all there this summer. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move on to agenda item number eight, our monthly in, uh, employee spotlight. And I will yield the floor to Mr. Daffis. Thank you, Mayor. I'm delighted to uh, spotlight one of our real veterans, uh, Maplewood Township, our employee, Michelle Wellesley, who's been with us for 33 years, 28 of them uh, supporting and helping our seniors and alter, our older adult population uh, in the township. Uh, you know, it's been a difficult year uh, last year, uh, but all of our employees in the township uh, carried through, dedicated, did not miss a beat in providing all the important and fantastic services that our residents uh, are accustomed to and which they deserve. And Michelle is one of those. Michelle has been our point of contact for all of our seniors, uh, supporting them, through all of the uncertainties during the isolation that they suffered and during the lockdown in terms of help with groceries, in terms of help with transportation to doctor's appointments and to, uh, to see friends or family, and in terms of just emotional support, uh, keeping them engaged through online programming, uh, which we were all learning on the fly together, uh, and making sure that they were still connected even though they were physically isolated. Uh, as you all know, we have a fantastic senior center, which is really the grand hall of a lot of programming that we do for our older adults in town, but that has been closed because of COVID. But Michelle found ways to keep people connected uh, with each other and with the town to make sure that they were supported in so many different critical ways. So I'm really delighted tonight uh, that we are spotlighting her and honoring her for her dedication and commitment, especially during Older Adults Month, uh, which we uh, proclaimed um, last meeting, our last TC meeting. So uh, the resolution of recognition and appreciation for Michelle Wesley says that the Township of Maplewood has been fortunate to have dedicated staff committed to the mission of the municipality, that we recognize Michelle for her incredible commitment to the residents of our town by stepping up and addressing projects, requests, or responsibilities above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, that we, the Township Committee, wish to extend our utmost appreciation for Michelle's work uh, that and for, for everything that she has done to make public service an exciting and joyous experience for the residents of the Township of Maplewood. And we wish to extend Michelle our sincere best wishes at, for her continued success serving our seniors uh, and all and every happiness in the future. Uh, you know, truly Michelle makes the township look really good. And she is part of all of our incredible employees who make the township a desirable place to work. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Maplewood Township Committee recognizes and appreciates Michelle Wesley 
Program Supervisor of Senior Services in the Department of Community Services. We wish her well in all her future endeavors. This is not goodbye, Michelle. And that this resolution of appreciation and support be duly recorded by the Township Committee on this 18th day of the month of May in the year 2021. Congratulations, Michelle. So Mayor, if, uh, if you're willing, I'd love to open the floor to Michelle to uh, you know, make a few remarks here. Uh, she is with us. And then to turn it over to our Community Services Director, Melissa Mancuso, for her remarks. And if you're willing, uh, we do have a few of our seniors themselves. Our Senior Advisory Committee Chair is with us. And I think she'd be delighted to also address the public this evening. Thank you. Michelle? You're muted, Michelle. <laughs> Still okay. muted. Oh, she just turned her camera off. <laughs> I think she's trying to make it work. Let's give it a few more seconds. Absolutely. Are we able to unmute her, Nick or Glenn? No, I can request that she unmute, but I can't physically do it for her. Yeah. Oh, Michelle, I know you've been waiting for this and you were ready to say some things. I know you have. Oh, my goodness. So you go to your, your Hello? Zoom. Oh, oh, yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> I, don't, I never touched it. I never muted it, so I don't know what happened. Um, I'm not one for speeches. So it'll be very short. I just wanna say thank you so much. I've worked for the town for a long time. So therefore I must like it, um, specifically the people that I work with, meeting the staff and, and also my seniors. It's been a weird year, but um, we made it work. We brought things to them and we got them to us in, in small numbers. Um, 33 years is a long time. Um, 28 with the seniors has definitely been the highlight, if that's the thing. You know, 28 is the majority, but um, it's fun. I like what I do. So I don't really consider it a job on most days. There are some days where it definitely feels like it. But thank you. Thank you all so very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Do we have Melissa Mancuso with us? I think I saw her over on the attendee side. Nick, can we get her over as a panelist? What was my... Melissa, if you can hear us. Still on the attendee. Nick, can you uh, bump you Melissa over? over? Or Glenn. I promote her to a panelist. Thank you. Okay, Melissa, let's, there you are. Okay. Hi guys. <laughs> um, I just wanted to congratulate Michelle. It, um, it's very well deserved. Of course, I love working with her. Um, We've done a lot of different things uh, in the past, you know, five and a half years. We've had different venues. She's uh, got a really strong following with our seniors. And um, even last summer, she went back to her original roots and was working at camp with us when the senior services were on a little bit of a shutdown. So um, she has a lot of knowledge about the town and she's definitely always an assistance to me about all of the um, memories that she has growing up in Maplewood and at our different parks. And um, I'm really grateful that we get to work together. And I know um, so are our seniors and really everybody that interacts with Michelle. So she makes work fun and she's a great part of the team. So thanks, Michelle. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And Nick, can we uh, bring over Joan Crystal? Absolutely. Give me one. Okay, Joan, you've been promoted to a panelist. <laughs> oh, 
Thank you very much. I really did want to wish Michelle all the best and congratulate her on a very well-deserved award. I don't know, Michelle, if you realize how much of a lifeline you have been Aww. for the senior community, particularly during the past year. When so many of us were struggling with isolation, the phone calls to check and make sure we were okay, the shopping that you did for so many of us who could not get to a supermarket, the sunshine kits, which were oh. so appreciated, and just everything that helped us keep going. So oh. thank you very, very much. Well, you're welcome very much. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Mayor. I'm turning it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis and Michelle. Thank you again, like I said to you privately and I'll say to you publicly, you have been amazing uh, for our community, especially for our seniors. So thank you for your service. Okay, we'll now move on on our agenda to number nine. Um, as I mentioned previously, as new police officers uh, come to Maple, we like to introduce them as a new tradition as we continue to enhance our relationship with the community and our police department. And so we did this last month with two new officers. And so we're honored to do it this month uh, as we completely fill our table. And I'll now yield the floor to Mr. Lindbergh. Thank you, Mayor McGeehee. Um, you know, as uh, chair of the Public Safety Committee, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor for me uh, to yet again have an opportunity tonight to introduce to Maplewood uh, another great uh, new police officer, new to Maplewood, not, not new to the police service. Uh, officer Ron Smith uh, has served, he'll tell you, he can tell you a little bit about his own background, but he's uh, previously served as an officer in our neighboring community of Irvington. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's an experienced officer. He, he knows uh, this area well. And, uh, you know, he brings that experience uh, to Maplewood. Uh, the Township Committee met with him earlier this year. Um, we were looking to, uh, to fill some vacancies that were gonna be coming up this year. Uh, we were very impressed with him and uh, we're, we're very glad to have him. So I'd like to give Officer Smith a, a chance to introduce himself to the community. And then I'd like to give, uh, after that, a chance uh, for Chief DeVall to, to say some words about Officer Smith. So uh, Officer Smith, if you're able to, uh, to unmute and, and maybe uh, there you are. So uh, Officer Smith, maybe you can introduce, ourself, uh, introduce yourself to the community and uh, tell Maplewood a, a little bit about yourself. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the Township of Maplewood. I'm Officer Smith. Uh, I served in Irvington as a police officer for three and a half years. Uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to become a Maplewood officer, to be a part of this township and this family. I'm, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I, I can't express it enough. Um, I'm going to bring a lot of hard work and dedication to the table. Can, can you hear me? We can hear you, Officer Smith. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to bring a, ho a whole lot of hard work and dedication to the table. I'm going to be consistent. Uh, my goal is to give you guys my all. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of this community-based police organization. And again, thank you, Mayor McGee and the Township of Maplewood and also Maplewood Police Department for the opportunity. Thank you, Officer Smith. And we, we welcome you to Maplewood and, and we look forward, especially now that, that folks are getting outside more uh, as the weather warms up, we, we look forward to, to seeing you at community events and uh, out and about in the village on Springfield Avenue in our parks and uh, as, as folks get outside this summer. Uh, if you see Officer Smith, uh, say hello, introduce yourself. Uh, Chief Duvall, do you, uh, would you like to maybe say a few words about Officer Smith? Uh, yes, Mr. Lemberg. I would like to add that that the most important process that I can be part of is uh, bringing new officers into our team and into our family, as it's been said previously. Uh, I'm very proud to say 
that 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 we must be doing something right over here because we are attracting candidates from from all over the county and all over the area. Um, when we inter when we interview the officers, particularly uh, Mr. S uh, Smith uh, Ronell, he was very impressive. I mean. He brings everything that we're looking to to have to our community, and I'm very proud to have him. And uh, he's an asset. He's going to be an asset. That's it. Thank you, Chief. Uh, and again, welcome, Officer Smith. We're, we're uh, pleased and proud to have you here in Maplewood, and uh, we look forward to, to many years to come uh, and to seeing you around our community. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll give the floor back to you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And congratulations, Officer Smith, and welcome to the community. And we're, we're very happy to have you. Um, we'll now move on to agenda Thank item you. number 10. Oh, you're welcome, sorry. <laughs> we'll now move on to agenda item number 10, uh, which is our first public comment period. This is on agenda items only uh, with a limit of three minutes. So now the floor is open and um, uh, Nick, I'll let you uh, take the lead here. Good evening, Township Committee. We will now do the uh, public co uh, comment portion of the meeting. So if you would like to address the Township Committee, please use the raise your hand function. If you're on the phone, it is star six to raise your hand, star nine to unmute. Mr. Mikulowski will transfer you over to a panelist. We'll give you three minutes to speak. So first up, we have a Thomas Spirell. You have three minutes. Sure, thanks. Uh, my name is Tom Spirell. I'm a resident of uh, Maplewood on Euclid Avenue. And I understand field conditions are on the agenda tonight. So I wanted to share some thoughts uh, as the committee approaches that. I'm a parent of three young athletes. So I'm not here representing any one individual sports group because I think my children are in almost all of them. Uh, but before I start on fields, I should say that I appreciate the work of the township committee and its members and the service you provide to the community. I've personally witnessed uh, great improvements of lots of different areas including police reform and the need for crisis intervention, economic development of Springfield Avenue, as well as the COVID response. But one area that I have not seen any improvement in in my 15 years as a resident is the playing conditions of the field for our student athletes. This is not to say money has not been spent because it has, but rather improvements have not been seen. As a volunteer coach on two teams, I can tell you that our town uh, does not provide sufficient conditions for the playing surfaces. When you compare it to other towns, it is absolutely uh, under uh, benchmark and underwhelming. Uh, often kids talk about when we go to different places, why don't we have this or how come their fields are better? And it's actually something that brings their mood down uh, going into a game. Athletics is more about home runs or shots on goals. Uh, it has a lot to do with confidence, friendships, leadership, but most importantly, physical health. So after years of uh, failed attempts and wasted money, uh, certain grass fields are often unusable and other grass surfaces are in need of significant grass improvement. Now's the time to, to take action. As I was drafting my comments, I thought about a statement saying, let's be bold, like let's build some infrastructure. But then I realized there's nothing bold about having turf fields in a town and having functioning grass surfaces to play on. So I believe the time has come. Uh, let's answer the question that many residents in Maplewood are asking every single day, where do all of our tax dollars go? Let's have a government that respects and provides athletes consistent playing fields and let's give the kids the facilities they deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sparrow. Okay, Mr. Mayor, next up we have Kristen Weber. You have three minutes. Hi, good evening. Thank you very much, um, Maplewood Township Committee, for the opportunity to speak. There's so many wonderful things going on in the town. It was great to, to listen to in tonight. Um, my name is Christine Weber, and I wanted to just say a few words on behalf of parents and members of the community that support better athletic fields and facilities for our towns. Um, I'm the current parent of three boys in, in the South Orange Maplewood School District, one at South Orange Middle and two at Columbia High School. And I'm also an environmental consultant with over 25 years of experience in the field of pollution and environmental risk management. Um, as the town considers improvements to our fields, including DeHart Park and Maplecrest, I wanted to just urge you to please consider turf as a safe and viable alternative to our grass fields. 
Um, it's important that you not allow sort of opinions and conjecture or hearsay about the environmental risks of turf hinder or delay the process of improving our fields in a timely manner. Um, it's important that decisions be made based on a full understanding of the facts. And with that, please understand that when athletic fields are designed, um, professionals uh, evaluate options for optimal safety, environmental considerations and playing performance, um, the engagement of professional civil engineers, environmental scientists, and landscape architects is typical during the design phase, and their expertise should be relied on to guide the process and, and uh, ensure that the design plans for the fields meet the needs of the town and its residents. Um, athletic field projects today can be designed without the use of controversial crumb rubber. Um, they're designed with the involvement of the local environmental commissions and in compliance with state regulations and requirements. Um, field projects can result um, in improved stormwater management, improved drainage, and in consideration of natural resource, um, resources and conditions such as bordering wetlands, intermittent streams, and high groundwater. Um, finally, um, they can be designed with cooling systems in place to reduce ambient air temperature, ambient temperatures of the field during summer play. And uh, field projects these days are often applauded by residents and local conservation commissions alike when they're completed. Um, so just to conclude, the safety of turf has been well established and demonstrated by research. I simply ask the committee to please see turf as uh, not as a controversy, um, but as an opportunity to shine, um, to improve our existing fields in ways that are environmentally considerate, functional, and competitive with surrounding towns. Um, so with that, let's continue to make Maplewood a place to be proud of. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Okay, Mr. Mayor, next up we have Scott DeAndrea. You have three minutes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my computer's not working, that's fine. Hi everybody, I'm Scott DeAndrea. Um, I'll keep it quick. Tom and Christina had some good points in the field. I wanna say a couple more things on top of that. Uh, I do have three girls, uh, each of whom have played or currently playing lacrosse in the town program. I'm in my seventh season as a volunteer coach for the Maplewood girls lacrosse team. Um, available and usable field space in Maplewood South Orange continues to be one of our club's largest constraints to performance and growth. We currently use Chiswick as our primary field each spring. It's, it has light, so that's great. Uh, a couple issues with Chiswick is not large enough uh, to have a full field, so that kind of limits our ability to practice all aspects of the game. Um, we also have multiple age groups on at the same time, which makes the uh, field relatively crowded. The one thing I'm more uh, concerned about, the field is kind of dangerous. There's ruts, there's holes all over the field. Uh, I have to place cones in certain areas, you know, so the kids avoid it. I see a lot of twisted ankles and tweaked knees uh, every season. It's only a matter of time till we see a serious injury. Um, Worse yet, the field's kind of well hidden and some bad actors have been driving on the field doing donuts. Currently there are ruts and dead grass in the middle of the field with tire tracks, which is uh, not fun to play on. Um, over the last seven years, I've been coaching, not once have we been able to start practicing on time. So we've had snow melt and March rains and the fields are pretty much a mud pit. And the same thing happens during a lot of the spring rains. So we lose a lot of practice time for that. Um, we're not ever, ever able to host a game. Um, this season, I will say that the president of um, Maplewood Girls Lacrosse Club did a lot of work and we were able to host one game each over at Cameron Field. Uh, we had to uh, line the field ourselves. So it's not always easy for our girls to drive 30 minutes to every game and see these incredible facilities in surrounding towns. Uh, just in closing, um, you know, it's not just about our girls playing games. Uh, it's about our girls, uh, you know, helping our girls develop into young women, uh, the social aspect, the camaraderie, the interactions with others and the competition. Uh, basically working together as a team helps build life lessons. So it's very valuable to our girls. This is a feeder program for Columbia High School where two of my girls have played varsity and my third girl. 30 seconds. Yep, we'll hopefully have a better time getting in there. Um, that's about it, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. DeAndre, Andrea. 
Okay, Mr. Mayor, next up we have a Mr. Mike Lazowski. You have three minutes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Mike Laskowski. Um, I've been a resident of this town since I was five years old. Um, I'm, I have the luxury of uh, having four beautiful young children who have all utilized the facilities of Maplewood um, since we've been here. Um, and as a youth growing up here, I had the privilege of playing on all these fields myself. Um, and sadly, um, they're in the same conditions that they were when I played. Um, I am a volunteer. I coach all sports from girls lacrosse to boys lacrosse to flag football to soccer. Uh, you name it across the board. Um, and it's very concerning when you have situations in our town where, one, we don't have uh, towns that want to come play here because it's unsafe. Um, as was stated earlier, we have issues where we can't even practice because any amount of rain is going to cause the fields to be unplayable. And if we do play on them, then we've ruined the fields for the entire season. Um, we had an opportunity years and years ago to put a multi-purpose field at DeHart. Um, I voted for that. I was a strong advocate for that. Unfortunately, it was voted down. The town ended up spending more money, to my understanding, doing the grass field redoing the grass field multiple times. It still is not properly pitched. I'm not trying to say that you haven't worked hard at it. I just think there needs to be a priority and focus here. Uh, recently, I've had the luxury of going to visit the brand new field in Milburn at the public library, phenomenal facility. They were able to put their third multi-purpose field up in, in Milburn. Uh, new Providence has just done multiple uh, multi-purpose fields for lacrosse, soccer, softball, baseball, um, actually, one of the town councilmen is a former Columbia High School grad, Jim Madden, um, is offered willingness to help uh, facilitate how they were able to do that with town funds, some fundraising, and keeping it in, in the community. Um, it's just very concerning when we see the surrounding areas and what they're doing to support their youth athletic sports programs. Again, it's not about the wins and the losses. It's about building self-esteem. It's about building camaraderie, sportsmanship. Um, all things we want to see for our youth in this town and for the amount that we all pay and each one of us pays in taxes, it is unacceptable, seconds. unacceptable for us to continually pass the buck on maintenance or lack thereof and not have a commitment. We commit to a lot of things in this town, but there's a lot of people that are spending a lot of money here. Lastly, we've been contributing $20 to a sports field fund. I'd love to know where that money has been spent over the last 10 years because I'm not seeing it in my, in my fields. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lowski. Okay, Mayor, next up we have Brian Callahan. You got three minutes. Good evening, Mr. McGahey, Township Committee members. Uh, my name is Brian Callahan from Prospect Street in Maplewood, a 26 year resident of Maplewood, former chairman of the Maplewood Open Space Trust Fund Committee, past president and current board member of the Cougar Soccer Club. I too will speak to the field uh, proposal uh, on the agenda tonight. So far this season, our town fields have been closed 25% of the available open days since the fields opened in early April due to unsafe playable conditions, basically meaning they're underwater. This impacts hundreds of our local uh, kids and adults, as well as equal number of visiting teams and clubs. We've been talking about our field conditions even long before the DeHart project in the early 2000s. I'm involved in this ongoing discussion almost since the, uh, moving into town. I have one grown daughter who survived our fields and a younger daughter who's graduating from Columbia High School next month. Both of my girls are part of a growing number of young athletes who have left our current programs in order to know that they will be able to participate and play on a regular basis without worrying if it's going to rain and how long our fields will be closed. It is very, very difficult for me to understand how every, and I mean every surrounding town, Milburn, Irvington, Newark, West Orange, Orange, Summit, Springfield, Union, on and on and on, can figure out how the need for a turf field is in order uh, to sustain the active youth and adult programs offered by their towns. And we, Maplewood, continue to struggle with this. 
I have no horse in this race except to hopefully be part of a change to enhance our field conditions for the growing number of young children in our community. We've wasted hundreds of thousands of dollars on inadequate solutions and yearly maintenance and only have the problem persist and grow. <clears throat> Not only are we fortunate to live in a diverse community, but we also have a robust participation in a variety of athletic interests, including soccer, field hockey, lacrosse, baseball, ultimate Frisbee, softball, flag football, just to name a few. And that includes boys and girls as young as age four on up to adults that participate. Now is the time to make a solid plan, consider the turf at the heart, reassess drainage issues in other town fields, and look forward to more active days on our Maplewood fields. Thank you all for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Okay, Mr. Mayor, next up we have David Herman. You have three minutes. Thanks, Nick. I hope you didn't come on muted time towards my time. But um, first of all, I want to thank Nick and all the folks at the rec department and public works department who really work hard to try to get our fields in playing shape, but there's only so much they can do. So I'm here tonight to actually represent the MSO softball committee, which I'm a member of, and read a statement that we prepared, which we will submit uh, to the committee after this. Everybody on the committee knows who I am, so thank you for indulging me. Um, the MSO softball committee enthusiastically supports the proposal to upgrade our playing fields, including installing turf at the Hart Park and renovating Maple Crest 3. The 326 girls who are playing recreation softball this year and the nearly 100 girls who play in the villagers travel program would greatly benefit from additional fields, particularly those that remain playable after rain. Much of our season, including uh, critical early season practices and games happen in April when rainy days are the norm. Our grass fields with poor drainage have a significant impediment and are a significant impediment to giving girls the opportunity to play. The recreation program led by volunteer coaches provides a wonderful opportunity for girls in our town to learn the critical lessons that team sports provide. But those lessons are only learned when girls can actually play. This season, as Brian mentioned, we've already missed several days because of field closures. For teams that only play two days a week, game cancellations wreak havoc on scheduling and significantly limit opportunities to practice and play, particularly when we're competing for field space with all the other sports and activities in this town and South Orange, I should mention. Additionally, even when the fields are playable, as others on this call have mentioned, Many of them have uneven terrain and create significant risk of injury to any girl who takes a wrong step and steps in a ditch or steps in a tire track left on one of our dirt fields. All Maplewood children should, of course, have the opportunity to play many sports, but we believe softball uniquely provides few barriers to entry, allowing it to serve critical equity interests in town. The fee to join recreation league and, and equipment costs are relatively low. We even have a Facebook group set up where parents in our program can swap used softball equipment for free. And simply put, more than any other sport, softball provides a low-cost chance for girls in town to play team sports and reap all the benefits they provide. Renovated fields, including a multi-use turf field at the Hart Park, would significantly increase playing opportunities for softball players, as well as increase their safety. For those reasons, the MSO softball committee enthusiastically supports a proposal to renovate the Hart Park with turf and renovate Maple Crest 3. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Mr. Mayor, next up we have uh, Jaylene Griffiths. You have three minutes. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Jaylene Griffiths. I have three children, a boy and two girls, all of whom have played multiple sports and still do in our town programs. So I'd like to talk a bit about the field situation and about why I think we need better facilities in order for our town clubs to thrive. I'm also in my third year as a volunteer coach for Maplewood Girls Lacrosse Club. And as you've heard from some of my co-coaches today, field usage and availability is by far the biggest barrier that our club faces. As Scott mentioned, Chiswick is our primary field each spring, but our younger girls have even had to resort to using Orchard Park due to lack of availability of functional and usable spaces. 
Rarely do our spring practice begin on time because all of our fields are in such poor condition and can't handle any adverse weather. So the town doesn't even open them until midway through April. We were fortunate this year to secure some space at Underhill's very aging turf field for only six March practices. Even though half the turf ended up coming home with us. But this was a special case this year and had that not been available, we could have been in a scenario where some girls would have been playing their first ever lacrosse games, having never picked up a stick before, because our season starts in mid-April, with only three practices under their belts, have we not had access to Underhill this year. And when you think about that, that puts us at such a serious disadvantage against towns with significantly better facilities than us, who have been able to practice much earlier in the season than we do. And that puts the girls in, you know, in a disadvantage and then looking around them and seeing the barriers they have to kind of uh, to, to, to meet right, right out as they start off the gate. Looking at Chiswich, on the plus side, it's got lights. Even if you do need a tree branch to access the light switch. On the downside, it's a dumping ground for broken down cars, garbage, and much worse. With terrible parking, potholes the size of a small car, and not to mention the random dips all over the fields that players sometimes fall into. I have to question the impression this gives to our young girls that this is the best place our town could come up with for them to practice sports. And what sort of impressions does it give to the visiting teams? With little or no home games, our teams are always at a disadvantage of being the visiting team. And I have to say, I am so grateful to the hugely supportive parents who happily travel around New Jersey with us. And I thank them for that as do their children. I'm also a mum to three soccer players, all of whom have come through the Cougar Soccer Club ranks. It's only a matter of time before someone gets seriously injured at Borden Park or De Hart, with all the clumps of grass and dirt all over those uneven pitches and all their old ankles and sprained muscles it's going to cause. There are lawsuits waiting to happen, either from our own residents or worse, from visiting teams. My son's team has had to resort to renting the Orange Park turf field for their home games because of the state of De Hart. Unfortunately, it's too large a space for the girls' age group to rent, so they're stuck with the heart, which is really, really disheartening. At Mayport Girls Lacrosse Club. That is time. And across all our town teams. Thank you, Ms. Griffith. Mr. Mayor, next up we have Nicole Pivnik. You have three minutes. You're on mute, ma'am. Uh, my name is Nicole Pivnik. I live on Bowdoin Street in Maplewood, and I'm a co-chair of SOMA Action's Immigrant Rights Committee. I'm not here to talk about the fields tonight. Uh, I'm here to speak about discussion item number six in support of A5207 and S3361, which is proposed legislation currently in committee in New Jersey's state legislature. The legislation would prohibit all state and local agencies from entering into renewing and extending immigration detention contracts in New Jersey. Uh, in 2019, this township committee passed a resolution supporting the responsible phase out of the Essex County's contract with ICE. And that's a position that SOMA Action also holds. This legislation is very much in the spirit of that. And I also wanna note that none of the existing contracts expire until 2027 or beyond, which leaves plenty of time to work through a responsible phase out of the contracts. Um, as most of you likely know, the Essex County Commissioners recently announced that they're gonna stop holding ICE detainees as of this August. And this decision was made based on years of advocacy from SOMA Action, but also so many local immigrant rights groups across the state who have gone to the commissioners meetings every time to speak in support of uh, phasing out these contracts. But far from a moral victory, it was made because Essex County was able to replace the revenue from the ICE contracts with revenue for holding prisoners from our neighboring Union County. That said, other counties with ICE contracts, Hudson and Bergen have taken note and they've indicated they may follow suit. We know ICE is actively looking to add beds in New Jersey based on an RFI they made in December. So this legislation is super critical to ensure we don't keep feeding the machine that disproportionately impacts our black and brown immigrant neighbors. And instead, we need to focus on how we can support the release of current detainees to their families and the community. This new legislation would make significant progress towards creating a fair and welcoming New Jersey for all and is very much in the spirit of this township's beliefs and values. And so I'm asking the township committee to support this new legislation as well and let our state legislatures know that we wanna see it passed. Thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you, Ms. Pipnick. Mr. Mayor, that is all I have for you at this time. Nick, I got one more. You got one more for me, Glenn? Yep. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, Mike Connolly, you got three minutes. Okay. I'm Amelia Connolly, and I play for a Cougar Soccer. And I think D Hart should be turf because the fields get all teared up. And if it's not turf, that it's harder for the field to get teared up. And that's and since now the fields are grass, we can't. Uh, we have to put the fields to turf so that when so that the fields won't get teared up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Conley. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I got uh, one more, it seems. If you're on the telephone with the last four digits as 5505, please use the star nine key to unmute and we will let you talk for a few minutes. We can hear Hi, you. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, this is Beth Levy. Um, it's star six to unmute. But um, so good evening, thank you for hearing me. My name is Beth Levy. I'm the parent of two athletes in Maplewood, ages seven and nine. I'm a volunteer softball coach and also a pediatric physician assistant promoting the health care of children on a daily basis. Sports provide friendship, teach sportsmanship, and prevent obesity. The current status of our town fields do not allow our athletes to excel. We need a turf field that can provide reliable access to practices and provide safe conditions. If it rains one day, it takes multiple days for the fields to dry out. Athletes miss practices waiting for the fields to dry out, which ultimately hurts the team when it is game time. Our current fields do not allow teams to practice and excel. The concerns about turf being safe for our children are less concerning to me than the unsafe conditions on our current fields and the lack of exercise our kids endure due to closed fields. I urge you to consider turfing to Hart Park in order to allow our kids to have a safe re and reliable place to thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Levy. Okay, Mayor, that is all I have for you at this time. Okay, thank you, thank you, Nick. All right, we'll now move on to agenda item number 11. We have an ordinance. Actually, before I start, let me just communicate that uh, town hall, the clerk's office is open for another 20 minutes. So if there's anyone out there watching or listening who haven't had a chance to register to vote, you have another 20 minutes. Your vote is your voice. So uh, it's not too late. So head on over to town hall to, uh, to register to vote. Okay, we'll now move on to agenda item number 11. We have ordinance on final. Mayor, uh, ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 3027-21, an ordinance to amend chapter six of the code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Administration of Government. This ordinance will establish the terms and procedures for the off-duty employment of Maplewood police officers. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Would anyone like to speak on this ordinance in regards to establishing terms and procedures for off-duty employment of Maple Police officers? No one there. Thank you, Nick. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Can I get a motion, uh, Mr. DeLuca? I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange news record according to law. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Ritson, sorry, is there a discussion? Oh, sorry, no, Mr. Mayor, I, I just wanted to commend uh, Committeeman DeLuca, who uh, who did a lot of work. You know, this this ordinance uh, before was, you know, we were it was very, really, very basic, and uh, compared to other communities, uh, you know, we, we almost didn't have an ordinance. And Mr. DeLuca did a lot of research and put a lot of work into this uh, to to bring this. Uh, you know, really, uh, you know, up to up to the standards that uh, our ordinance should have. Uh, so I, I just wanted to, to publicly recognize the work that he did on this, uh, you know, through the Public Safety Committee uh, and on his own. 
uh, and I, I think this is in really good shape now. Uh, so I'm going to be pleased to vote for it tonight. And I'll also, I agree, I concur with that 100%. Second. <laughs> okay, uh, Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGee? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. We'll now move on to agenda item number 12, an ordinance on final. Ms. Mayor, uh, ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 3028-21. An ordinance to amend chapter 193 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Parks and Recreation Areas. This ordinance will adjust the hours that Maplecrest Park will be open to be consistent with the other parks within the township and will also adjust certain uses within Memorial Park. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Would anyone like to speak on this ordinance regarding adjusting the hours of Maplecrest Park so that they are consistent with other parks within our township? I do not, Mayor. Thank you, Nick. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Can I get a motion, Ms. Adams? Yes, Mayor. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Mr. Limbrick. Uh, you know, again, I, I just like to uh, recognize my colleague, committee woman Adams, uh, who, you know, who steered this through uh, the, you know, the committee on recreation and human services that she chairs. You know, we uh, brought in a lot of different stakeholders on this, including, including the chief of police, uh, you know, to, to talk about, uh, you know, different issues, including public safety, including recreation, uh, and I just want to note that, you know, this is, this is really going to open up some possibilities uh, for Maple Crest Park, including, uh, as this township committee has discussed, uh, you know, possibly adding lighting to the skate park area that the Danny Eyes Foundation uh, has talked about, uh, raising money and contributing towards. Uh, and, you know, this can, uh, you know, this can, uh, you know, the previous ordinance would have, you know, would have, you know, maybe not intentionally, but would have actually prohibited something like that, uh, given the hours the park would have would have closed. Uh, so, you know, this opens up possibilities uh, for Maple Crest Park and uh, some of the, the future projects we're going to be doing there. Uh, so this is this is important work. And I want to thank uh, Committee Woman Adams uh, for the work that she did with that committee to to bring this forward. And uh, I was glad to second it and I'll be proud to vote for it. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, for your help. Yeah. Thanks for your help on it, Mr. Lumber. And thank you, Ms. Adams, too. This does bring balance, as I think, which is really important, so all parks can have that balance. So thank you as well. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGee? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. We have our third and final ordinance uh, on final. Yes, Mayor, item number 13, ordinance number 3029-21. Township of Maplewood, calendar year 2021 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank per NJSA 40A4, 45.14. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Would anyone like to speak on this ordinance regarding to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a bank cap? I have no one, Mayor. Thank you, Nick. Hearing none, uh, I'll move it myself. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange news record according to law. I Thank second. You. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGee? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. Uh, we have our first ordinance on introduction. Yes, Mayor Adam 14. 
Introduction to New Ordinance, Ordinance Number 3030-21, is an ordinance to amend Chapter 123 of the Code of the Township of Maywood, entitled Fees. This ordinance will establish the sewer fee beginning in 2021. Okay. I move this passage. I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading. Its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record, and a hearing to be held on June first. I second. Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Daffis. Yes. Mr. Deluca. Yes. Mr. Lembrick. Yes. Mayor McGee. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. Uh, we have another um, ordinance on introduction. Yes, Mayor, also on introduction to item number 15, ordinance number 3031-21 is an ordinance to amend classification of employment positions within the Township of Maplewood and to establish salary ranges for employees. This ordinance will revise classification of employment positions and salaries with, within the Township of Maplewood consistent with the revision of the table of organization established within the Township of Maplewood. I'll move this. I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading, its publication according to law of the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on June 1st. I second the motion. Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGee. Yes, thank you, Ms. Fritzen. Okay, we are uh, now on agenda item number 16, uh, reports from departments. Um, I know Mr. Kaloje is here, but he'll probably join me in discussion item number two, unless he would like to report on something else. No, I'm just here to answer questions. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kaloje. Okay, we'll now move on to agenda item number 17, administrative reports. We'll first hear from our township administrator, Mr. Johns. Thank you, Mayor. Just a few brief things tonight. Um, by way of update, the farmer's market starts uh, for the public's sake the first Monday in June. So we're looking forward to get that going. Um, from a software perspective, we discussed the last couple of weeks, various technologies that we're going to be improving on. Uh, both OpenGov, which was approved last week, and I'm sorry, Granicus, which was approved last meeting, and OpenGov, which is on the agenda for tonight. Uh, we hope to have implementation rolling in the summer, which I think is the ideal time to do it. So I'd like to thank the Township Committee for their support in these endeavors as we move forward. Uh, the, we hired a new DPW foreman in the building. His name's Josh. You may have, if you haven't been in the building, he's been around um, and is around town. He's doing a nice job so far. Um, related to agenda items, one of them was briefly mentioned. We have two resolutions to approve Collier's Engineering, formerly known as Mazer, who's done work with us in the past. One of them is, as requested from the prior meeting, the area in need, area in need of redevelopment study for the West Parker site, and also for analysis on the Spray Park site. So there are two separate resolutions. There were some late additions to the agenda, which you saw related to an affordable housing grant um, for a local uh, apartment, a local complex. And from a recreation standpoint, the community fridge or cultural affairs, the community fridge is in process and we're looking forward to a, a ribbon cutting of some sort uh, much sooner rather than later. So you're going to be uh, pretty pleased with what's going on over there. And finally, just touching quickly off of what Mayor McGee mentioned related to COVID, we're in the process working with uh, DPW and facilities to effectuate the reopening of the municipal building um, to the public at some point. Uh, we don't have a firm date in mind at this moment, but I, it will be happening uh, sooner rather than later. So uh, we have been working to um, do that in the appropriate way. And beyond that, I have no other comments, unless you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Gimes. Any questions for Mr. Gimes? Mr. DeLuca. Thank you. So Mr. Gimes, I, I saw the resolution 14221. That's the one for um, studying the redevelopment area. Mm -hmm. So I just want to get the process clear going forward um we authorize you to go out and get information on a cost to do a redevelopment study mm -hmm. and honestly we haven't heard anything until i haven't seen anything until tonight and i have yet to see the proposal about this and okay um that typically is not the way we know we may do it like that going forward but typically we would like to see that so that we understand who we're hiring and what the cost is. Because okay. honestly, this cost is pretty high for a one 
parcel um, compared to what we spent for other parcels in the past. And I'm not suggesting that we use the planner from before, but I would just like to know a little bit more than all of a sudden just see something on the consent agenda. Okay. Um, yeah, my apologies. I didn't know what the process was. I was just kind of in the past, I was just, you know, uh, requested to seek a firm. I used to pick one of the firms that have worked with us here on several issues in the past that did this work. So um, that's where I was coming from. But if there's a process that was done before me, then, you know, I apologize for not kind of finding out what that was. Or even if you, you know, one other option we've done also is to bring it back to the seed so that we can have a discussion about it. So that would be another option, but I, we should touch base somewhere before a, a township committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Duluka. So should we pull that resolution later? Might be advisable or no? I would not be in favor of pulling it. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we pull it. I just would like to get clear about the process going forward. I'm okay with doing it. Same with me. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Gimes? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Gimes. We'll now hear from our township attorney, Mr. Desiderio. Mayor, I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Desiderio. Any questions for Mr. Desiderio? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, our township clerk, Ms. Fritzen. Thank you, Mayor, I have a couple of things. So uh, uh, as you mentioned earlier, we have about uh, nine minutes left at the Office of the Township Clerk is um, open and available for voter registration. If you need uh, to register to vote, to be eligible to vote in the primary election. So upcoming uh, primary election is Tuesday, June 8th. And uh, I wanted to mention that, uh, you know, we're making preparations because it's not all that far away. And um, I mentioned at the last meeting that uh, Maplewood voters will have uh, brand new uh, voting machines. And we're offering in conjunction with Essex County uh, an election workers, uh, board workers class on, um, on the machine. So um, that will help. Uh, we have scheduled um, through Mr. DeLuca and uh, as our OEM uh, coordinator to have uh, election uh, walkthrough um, on May 25th with um, all the departments that would be affected um, in helping uh, with um, the election uh, cleanliness and safety. And uh, I did want to report again that uh, Morrow Church will not be a polling location um, as they were not available for the primary. So District 7 and 8 have been moved to uh, the Woodland along with uh, 2 and 17 that are already there. We will be um, using our solar sign uh, outside of Morrow to direct voters uh, if they do not uh, look at the uh, sample ballot they receive, which would indicate that they are voting at the Woodland. So I think we're making um, good progress. We also, uh, I also wanted to report that the deadline for mail-in uh, absentee ballots is uh, June 1st. And again, this is a normal, if, if you want to use the word nor normal, uh, back to the way it was election. It's um, with all of our Maplewood polling locations and all of our Maplewood uh, polling districts. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention quickly was plans are uh, underway for Memorial Day. We'll be having a uh, thoughtful and meaningful uh, ceremony at 11 a.m. on the front plaza of uh, Maplewood Town Hall at the uh, Jerry Ryan uh, Plaza. And that will begin at 11 o'clock and more information following that. So uh, that's all I have. I'd be uh, later on speaking with Mr. Daffis on one of the discussion items, which was um, commuter parking and jitneys. So I have, Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. Uh, any questions for Ms. Fritzen? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will conclude with uh, agenda item uh, number 17, and now we'll move on to agenda item number 18, reports from elected officials. We'll hear first from Mr. DeLuca. 
I'm sorry. I thought he was Mr. Daffus was first, but okay. Um, just have a. a you are few. right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're paying attention, Mr. Daffus. Yeah. You're, you're correct, Mr. Daffus. Uh, I yield the floor to you. Very good. Are you are you testing us now, Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I say it, some I, I'm hoping people are okay. You know, pick their order, but yes, Mr. Daffus. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to start with COVID. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, new guidelines uh, are effective tomorrow. Uh, on the 19th, uh, the governor has lifted previous indoor and outdoor capacity limits. And yesterday, in light of the CDC's new masking guidance, the governor announced that outdoor masking is no longer required, while indoor masking will be in New Jersey, uh, including in public settings such as the ones you enumerated earlier, child care centers, schools, youth camps, restaurants, retail, etc. cetera. Uh, obviously, we cannot tell fully vaccinated folks from those who uh, are not vaccinated or, at all or partially vaccinated. Uh, so, but outdoor transmission bears lower risk of transmission than indoor does. So the governor declared that the state will not be abandoning indoor masking at this time. And we, as you noted earlier, will follow this guidance. Uh, we are expecting to receive uh, further specific guidance from the Department of Health uh, about schools and camps and pools. Uh, and about September return to school, uh, Governor Murphy did declare yesterday that all students will be returning to in-person learning five days a week uh, in the fall. Uh, we, we also want to alert parents. Uh, we've received a lot of questions uh, from parents about travel advisories. The previous travel advisories that were in effect, in effect uh, specific to New Jersey have also been lifted. Uh, there used to be an out-of-state registration form that was required, uh, but now the official guidance from the state with respect to travel advisories is please go to the CDC website and follow this, the CDC travel advisory. There is a special, uh, a separate advisory for folks who are not vaccinated um, versus folks who are vaccinated as it pertains to travel, and I think that's really very important. Uh, we want to ask the public as they reach out to our public health staff who are incredible in staying up to date and navigating all of these uh, constantly evolving rules and keeping us safe and keep getting us vaccinated and keeping us tested uh, and informing and communicating us as fast as possible. We, we urge their patients, uh, uh, you know, we get you the information as quickly as we get it ourselves. And uh, we just want everyone to know that our public health staff is, uh, you know, working as diligently as they can to get the information out there. If they don't have it, that means that it has not been provided, not that they're not doing their jobs. And just want to remind folks that our public health staff, uh, our parents themselves with, with uh, you know, little ones in the school district. Uh, and so they too are themselves, you know, on occasion, uh, as frustrated and impatient as the rest of us are with, the, with respect to the flow of information and the constantly evolving rules. Well, we're in this together. Uh, we have almost turned the corner here. We need to work together uh, and, and be a team and respect each other going forward. Uh, we are currently at 1,532 positive cases in Maplewood. Uh, we remain at 36 deaths. Our vaccination rate among adults, that's 18 and over only, who are fully vaccinated in Maplewood is at 68%. That's really a handsome number. We're doing a really good job in getting the word out there. This does not include 16 year olds who uh, many of whom in our community already have their first dose in, and it does not include 12 year olds uh, and, and above and over who have uh, recently begun getting vaccinated uh, within the past week. So, you know, we hope to get to over 70% to 80% uh, by the end of June, uh, early July, and, and that's a really good thing. 
With respect to the community board on police, the board is working through traffic stop recommendations that they will present to the appropriate authority, the township administrator and law enforcement agency leadership. Some of the re recommendations are easy to implement now, easy fixes as it were, others are long-term solutions uh, that we're gonna be able to adopt as uh, we become better capable of better data gathering and, and processing. Uh, there is a good dialogue going on there uh, uh, among the different stakeholders, and uh, I think there's a consensus that there is some room for improvement. The board is preparing a job description for the crisis intervention social worker for the appropriate authorities consideration that should be coming uh, shortly. Uh, and the board is working through its charter revisions in light of the AG guidelines that we discussed in depth before. With respect to our older adult, adults, our seniors, Two Towns Management team interviewed several great candidates uh, last week and chose South Orange resident Tracy Carroll as our new coordinator in South Orange. Tracy is deeply invested in the SOMA community already as a long-term uh, volunteer in several different capacities. She knows the community really well. Uh, is retired from corporate life and will bring gravitas to the role uh, as Carmen Morales' colleague in the Two Towns for All Ages uh, important initiative. With respect to community services, uh, Township Administrator uh, Jimes reported about the community fridge already. I'm sure you've all seen it. The, the little blue house going up uh, on Springfield Avenue in Indiana. We're really excited about it. That is the shed portion of the fridge. Uh, we're planning, as he noted, a launch event uh, sometime in mid-June, it looks like, with our partners, uh, and we'll have more information about that. Uh, REC and the Township Administrator have been revising the REC form that uh, our parents use to fill out uh, with respect to tracking greater demographics than we've tracked before. Uh, we currently track race and ethnicity, but we also, as we discussed, and we all consented to doing so, we wanted to start uh, tracking LGBTQI plus uh, demographics as well. Uh, I supplied uh, our community services director Mancuso and the township administrator Jimes, along with our rec chair, uh, Ms. Slavosky, best practice questions from the Williams and Fenway Institutes, and they have adopted those questions, uh, and that's moving forward, and that's a good thing as well. Um, our leaf blower ordinance uh, applies to gas powered, which applies to gas powered blowers, leaf or for mosquito spraying is in effect and it applies to both residents and commercial entities. We are out there enforcing the ordinance and we wanna get the word out to our residents as well as our registered commercial entities in town. So uh, we've been blasting the information out via our usual channels. Please help us spread the word, do the right thing on your lawn and speak with your landscaper if you're someone who hires a landscaper. Uh, and you can report a violation by calling our code enforcement off officials or via the Citizen SDL app, SDL Citizen app. It's a great way, it's a free app that you can download on most uh, devices, Samsung or, or Apple, uh, and it allows you to communicate with the township to uh, file notices of violation, to ask questions, uh, register complaints, so on and so forth. So please do it that way. Please don't call the police on your neighbor uh, because of leaf blowers. Um, and any video or pics that you might take do have evidentiary weight. So, you know, that is another way to document what is happening uh, so that we can follow through on our end. Uh, also, please keep your dogs uh, on the leash in public places. We've had a couple of bites recently and a few other skirmishes in the past week. Uh, in our parks. We want everyone to have the opportunity to enjoy our parks, including our pets, uh, but we wanna do so responsibly and respectfully. With respect to our business district uh, in the village, we're heartened, we're heartened by and excited about the continued good news about the Maplewood Theater as the parties get closer and closer to signing a deal and contracts. Uh, there will be significant renovation required there. 
so you know we're not probably expecting uh, we're not expecting an opening until early next year, but it's going to be a community destination and another big win for Maplewood when it does open. Uh, with respect to King's grocery recruitment and discussions continue, and I think we're getting closer there to hopefully be able to announce some good news before the end of summer there. Uh, and interviews began yesterday for the new village manager. And I understand that there will be another round during the first or second week in June. Uh, the committee is hoping to make an offer by mid-June. Pride, Pride is uh, on its way in June and planning is in full swing by now. We have another meeting later this week when we hope to wrap things up, put the calendar together, uh, make some posters and post the website and other promotional materials. Uh, we will launch Pride as we do officially as a township every year with the Equality March and Rally that first Sunday, that is June 6th, starting at 10 a.m., where we will gather at Rickleton Square, raise the flag, uh, march through a Maplewood Village over to Town Hall, where we will have a few speakers, a few honorees, uh, and then join the Youth Pride Picnic, our youth who are claiming their space uh, over uh, by the gazebo uh, at the Hilton branch of our uh, tremendous library. So, so please put that on your calendars and we welcome everyone to join us. We didn't get to do this last year for obvious reasons. And I think there's a, there's a need to, uh, to get together and, and to be together and support each other this year in particular. And I'm gonna end my report, Mayor, with uh, a couple of updates from the school district, actually. One is related to Pride, Lavender graduation. We're doing Lavender graduation again. As you remember, Mayor, we did it uh, back in 2019 uh, in our assembly room. Uh, remember when we used to have meetings in the assembly room? Uh, so Lavender graduation is on June 3rd this year at 6.30 p.m. The school district, Dr. Taylor and, and Principal Sanchez, CHS Principal Sanchez, were very keen on hosting this year uh, at the CHS Auditorium, uh, which will provide the opportunity for folks to join us in person or remotely as people are comfortable. They have the technology there. We do not in the assembly room. So, so it's going to be in the CHS auditorium uh, starting at 630, uh, followed by uh, you know, a gathering outdoors uh, in the adjoining courtyard. We, we really ask people to come out and support our graduates, our 2020 and 2021 graduates. We have a few signups already. This is imp really important to support our graduates um, who have been isolated. And until President Biden took office recently, literally under attack, our LGBTQ graduates in, in particular. So Lavender gra graduation has a really uh, extra important affirming um, uh, opportunity this year that we should all embrace. Uh, I want to note that the district adopted resolution 4149 the other night, which directs Superintendent Dr. Taylor to commission a task force to combat students to combat student sexual harassment and violence. This is in response to students going public about their experiences, including uh, when Lily Foreman, student rep, uh, provided her powerful testimony uh, on this subject at last month's BOE, which I have to say I attended uh, and witnessed, and I was really uh, mortified and moved by her testimony. The task force will be comprised of several relevant stakeholders, including students, parents, professionals, special educators, and others. Its mission will be to assess current district code of conduct policies, procedures, protocols, and to recommend changes uh, and new training and to identify other necessary support systems. This is the only school district leading the way in this manner in our state, as, as we are aware. Uh, and speaking of new protocols and procedures, um, the district also updated its policies to expand its support and protections for trans and non-binary students la last month, which is a really big win. Uh, it's the most in-depth board supported LGBTQ policy in the country and certainly a first in our county. Uh, so uh, you can read more about those particular in, uh, initiatives on the board's website, which I understand is going to be updated tomorrow to reflect them. And that is my report. Thank you, Mayor.
Thank you, Mr. Davis. <laughs> that was very thorough. Thank you, sir. I move uh, to adjourn. <laughs> I was going to say, I think we all get to stop at this. <laughs> very, very good, Mr. Davis. And, and it just shows the community that we, uh, there's a lot going on. And, and thank you for being very thorough and very broad and all the subcommittees and events that happen outside of this uh, meeting at FISA twice a month for four hours at a pop. So thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. DeLuca, I'll now yield the floor to you. Thank you. Um, just one thing, just to build on Mr. Daffis's uh, report about the COVID vaccinations. I was there yesterday volunteering and we did about 400 people. It's really gone down. So the Livingston site will close on May 28th. Uh, we're able to send people up to the West Orange site, the Kmart, which will stay open. But the important thing is if anyone's interested in a Johnson & Johnson J&J &J shot, uh, although they say you can do walk-ins in Livingston, don't believe them. Get an, get, get an appointment. Because yesterday we turned away a couple of people who were walk-ups because there's just not enough J&J &J vaccinations. So get an appointment. You can get a J&J &J vaccination at the Livingston Sears site uh, through the 28th in the afternoon generally around between 2.30 and 3.15. So it's a very quick hit, but get that appointment because if you walk up, you won't get it. If you want to get a Moderna shot, you can walk up for that. There's plenty of that, but the J&J &J is a little tight up there. Okay, so I just wanted to give a quick report. Engineering Public Works and Planning Committee had a meeting. We're going to be talking about the tree ordinance in a little bit. I want to let you know that we also spoke about the Jitney uh, I'm working with Mr. Kittner and, and we're putting together a survey uh, that we will be putting out to the community to gauge interest in ridership and commuting between now and the end of the year. And um, we'll have that information and we'll start discussing that at our committee level and hopefully in July, give some kind of report to the community as to what we think we can do. As we were told, we are down uh, a number of drivers. We only have four drivers right now. We, uh, one of our drivers, you know, we, we, we lost him to COVID. Uh, other drivers have found other work or they don't want to come back. So we have a, a couple of, uh, or more than a couple challenges, major challenges. So we'll be, but we really need to hear from the community as to their interest in um, going back to New York on the train and whether or not they're going to use the Jitney. So we'll be getting that out hopefully uh, beginning of next week, that survey. Uh, and I'll circulate the question so that everybody can see what we're asking. That, uh, thank you, Mr. Duca. I was gonna say one question we should have is how many days a week you're gonna go back? Because the word on the street is some companies are three days a week, two days a week. Uh, it's all over the place, so. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, and then just one last thing from the committee. The Maplecrest Park, uh, as Mr. Jimes mentioned, we have resolution 14321, which is the spray park. So I just want to be clear because this is what we talked about at the committee level. The spray park is a settled issue. We voted as a township committee to put money behind it. So it's a settled issue. It's going to happen in Maplecrest Park. I think the question is, we have a lot of flooding up there. So how will the spray park not contribute to more flooding and how are we going to do the drainage for the spray park? And can we build other drainage that we need in that? We heard today about the condition of field three. I mean, that's, you know, a flood zone. So what we're looking at, and, and hopefully the, the uh, engineers that we have, are hiring through this resolution, we will be able to really take a look at how to deal holistically with um, the, both the spray park and the flooding and uh, make a decision you know, the, the two choices are put it in the where we have the uh, tennis courts or maybe closer to the playground. I mean, the, there may be another, you know, the engineers may come up with something else, but it is going to happen in Maplecrest Park. It's probably not going to happen until late next year because you know how these things work. They take a long time to do everything. So, but it is going to happen and we're going to move forward with it. And lastly, I just want to report that Last night, I had a Zoom meeting with about 30 residents from U Street, where we have a number of quality of life issues. And um, 
Mr. Jimes, I'm going to work with you to set up an interdepartment meeting to deal with the, a number of the concerns that came up. Uh, and also what we do, we want to do is um, use our resources to support the neighbor's initiative to activate the street with positive activities. So we talked about, uh, I spoke to uh, Ms. Mancuso about, you know, maybe bringing the bounce house down there once, um, having the fire truck there, uh, uh, the community service officers doing a picnic and stuff. We're, we're really trying to change a bit of the dynamics there where we have some significant issues. So that's gonna happen. And this, the, the, there's a group of residents now on the block that are working to um, this, this, this group of folks. They uh, are working to come up with a, a few plans and we wanna be supportive of them. So I'll work with you on that, Mr. Jimes. What street? That's my report. What street did you say? Beth? Use Street. Use between use. Schaefer. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, but I, I thought the, you the said parts of use. Yeah. It's, it's the one between Schaefer and Boyden. Got it. The longer part. Right. That's. Uh, I think it'd be good to bring that also back to public safety at the next meeting because I know that. You know, there's been some challenges there. Right. Yeah, I, I certainly would. Be, I we're we're trying to address this as more than public safety, but yes, yeah, certainly public safety has a big role in that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. DeLuca. Um, all right, uh, Ms. Adams. My turn. I paid attention to, I knew I was third. <laughs> um, so I just want, I just have very brief report. Um, one thing I just want to clarify what, uh, what Mr. Davis reported with regard to the reporting of gas leaf blowers. If you do take a photo of the use of a blower and then take a picture of um, the name of the company or the license plate on the, on the vehicle. Um, and then when you submit it through SDL, include the date and time and the address where it was being used so that they, uh, they can accurately follow through or adequately follow through. Um, and you know that we're, we're, we're trying not to interact as much with the workers because the, the citation really goes to the company anyway, because they're the ones who know they're not supposed to be using them. Um, and then I want to just give a shout out and thank the Memorial Park Conservancy for um, a really, well, the weather was beautiful and there were, they organized painters in the park at Maplewood Memorial Park this past Saturday. Um, they had um, about 20 artists uh, in different areas and they were actively painting what they saw in front of them. So um, it was really, really nice. And the park was just a lot of people strolling around. It was, and, and stopping and watching and interacting with the, with the artists. And it was just really a wonderful kind of cool low key event. And um, they're gonna look to do that again because it was so successful. Um, and also, oh, so a shout out to Lara Tomlin on that, who, uh, whose idea it was and who, who worked with the, her fellow volunteers on the Conservancy Board to come to fruition on that event. And also um, to Deb Lyons for her leadership on the Conservancy. And then on top of that, if you walk around the park, you'll see that they have um, planted 50 new trees, which is awesome, just in Memorial Park alone. Um, we've, it's been several years since we've been able to plant um, a considerable number at a time. Uh, the Conservancy spent over two years uh, developing uh, a plan of basically research and, uh, and listing of all the trees in Memorial Park um, and there's 600 different kinds. And then also identifying because whether or not the same kind of tree can be planted and what um, permitted alternatives are because the park is on the state historic register. So anything you plant there or anything you do there needs to get approved by the state historic preservation office. So it's really, this is a tool that uh, I was clamoring for uh, early on when the Conservancy was formed and it was a lot of work. So um, just, a, uh, they're doing a really lot of good work and important work to restore our park to um, its, its historic beauty. So that's my report, Mayor. 
Thank you, Ms. Adams. Uh, Mr. Lindbergh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think I think you put me towards the end, hoping that maybe everyone else will uh, will take my items, but alas, no such luck. <laughs> uh, I, I, I do only have a few for tonight, though. Uh, as promised, uh, I'm going to start with uh, with public safety, and it was uh, it was my pr my pleasure before to read the the proclamation for Emergency Services Week. Uh, as I mentioned, the um, Maplewood Fire Department has already had an eventful week. Um, they've had uh, two uh, two incidents so far this week, uh, both of which I'm very pleased to report they were able to respond to. Uh, quickly and were able to uh, extinguish two fires uh, with uh, with no injuries. The first was a car fire uh, that happened near the intersection of Springfield Avenue and Boyden uh, yesterday uh, and they were able to uh, everyone was able to get out of the car and they were able to get that uh, that car fire under control quickly. It didn't spread to any other vehicles or, or property uh, and then overnight last night some people may have uh, have seen overnight or this morning, there was a fire on a two family home on Valley Street, uh, you know, significant damage there, uh, but the firefighters were able to, uh, to get the families out of there, uh, no injuries. Uh, so everyone was safe. Uh, and, um, you know, the fire department tells me that the police department also did a great job of uh, closing down the street and clearing the area. So the fire department was able to uh, to do the work, there was um, mutual aid provided by, by several other fire departments in the area. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it all went the way it's supposed to. Uh, and uh, fortunately, you know, no loss in life, no injuries, uh, and, uh, and great work by our Maplewood Fire Department, by our first responders. Um, some other information that came out of our public safety committee meeting from last week. Uh, overall, so far, crime stat, our crime stats, crime is down this year in Maplewood uh, by 43.5% uh, versus last year. Um, and, uh, you know, the um, <laughs> biggest part of that is that theft, uh, which was uh, our biggest item, which was up last year, uh, so far is down 58.5% uh, this year, nearly 60% uh, from last year. So that's really where we're seeing the biggest drop. Um, a lot of training is continuing, uh, ongoing in, in the police department. Uh, the uh, attorney general's office has introduced a new use of force reporting portal and all the officers are being trained uh, on that. We obviously over the past couple of years have uh, have all learned the importance of uh, the use of force guidelines and the importance of, of reporting that. Um, overtime in the police department uh, has been down uh, this year, which is, uh, which is good. Obviously, we've, we've discussed in, in all our meetings how it's going to be a challenging budget year. So uh, being able to control overtime and uh, the police department, which is, which is uh, the department where we uh, have, have the biggest budget uh, is uh, is important for uh, for our financial health. So uh, having overtime being down about 30% this year uh, is good. Uh, there were five referrals uh, made so far this year <laughs> for the justice program. That's a, a program we have with uh, with volunteers so that uh, youth can be referred uh, to that program. Uh, as an alternative to going through the criminal justice system. Um, as I said, five referrals made so far this year. Uh, at the last public safety meeting, there, were, there was a discussion about safety in our public restrooms, particularly uh, the restrooms in our parks. Uh, and our chief is going to work with our, our township business administrator and our recreation director uh, to discuss some, some solutions, both short-term and long-term uh, to that. Uh, particularly so that uh, so that our residents and our young people who are uh, using the the playgrounds and athletic facilities at our parks uh, can feel safe using the restroom facilities there. Um, when we talked about um, 
using uh, using the parking lot on Springfield Avenue for uh, for the COVID testing and also being able to uh, to use that for for other events on Springfield Avenue, uh, including some of the markets that we're starting to hold there now that the weather is getting better. Uh, Talked about an upcoming uh, Office, of Office of Emergency Management virtual exercise going to be the first week of June. Uh, talked about the rates for off-duty police officers. We passed that ordinance earlier tonight, uh, and we have a resolution setting those rates that's on the consent agenda tonight. Uh, we uh, welcomed uh, police officer Ron L. Smith, uh, and obviously we had a chance to introduce him to the community earlier tonight. And we answered some questions uh, from the community uh, related to the township's use of public safety cameras. Um, and the next public safety committee meeting will be uh, Wednesday, June 9, and that will be the, uh, the last public safety committee meeting uh, for Fire Chief Michael Weber, who will be retiring at the end of June. Um, so that, that's my report from public safety. Uh, my, my other items actually have to do with our, our sister community uh, next door in, in South Orange. Uh, I want to take a moment to congratulate uh, some colleagues over there. Uh, first, uh, Trustee Karen Hartshorn Hilton uh, on her re-election to the Board of Trustees uh, and uh, new trustees Bobby Brown and Bill Haskins on their recent election. Uh, Really look forward to, to serving with them, uh, you know, at least for the next seven and a half months. Uh, and the time I have left, I, I know they're both going to be great. Uh, I also want to take a moment uh, to acknowledge uh, two outstanding outgoing trustees, uh, Steve Schnall and Walter Clark. Uh, you know, these guys, um, you know, all communities uh, and our country need more uh, public servants like Steve and Walter. Uh, these guys, uh, you know, they, they really dug in, they got their hands dirty, they, they did the hard work, uh, you know, they did the research and they, they governed from a position of, uh, of, of science and common sense. Um, and what I really admired about them is, you know, it's, it's really easy to, to tear down someone else's ideas uh, it's a lot harder to build things. And Steve and Walter were always builders. Uh, they didn't care who got the credit. Uh, they didn't care whose idea it was. Uh, you know, they cared about doing what was best for the community. And when it came to the community, they didn't define it as just being within the borders of South Orange. They, they thought about the broader community and, uh, and that included Maplewood. And I thought Steve and Walter were always great partners uh, to us here in Maplewood uh, and they will be missed. And I'm confident that, that Bobby and Bill will, uh, will be great replacements uh, as trustees, uh, but, uh, but Steve and Walter are, are tough acts to follow. And I, I know neither of them are, are going anywhere uh, but their service uh, as trustees uh, will be missed. And I just wanted to take a moment to, to recognize them and let them know how much their service to our community uh, was appreciated uh, by us over here in Maplewood. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, that's my report for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Limbrick. And um, I, you know, that was one of the things I wanted to say tonight. So that one I will basically reiterate. I had a chance to speak with uh, with Walter and, and Steve last night and just tell, tell them thank you for your service. They both put in eight years of blood, sweat and tears as true volunteers and uh, they're both our, our class acts, uh, Walter's wife, Sarah. They're just very, just good people. And like you said, they're not going anywhere but they definitely left a positive uh, impression and, and, and uh, a mark on, on Maplewood and South Orange uh, and Essex County. So we, we salute them. Um, I'm going to start with a couple of things related to uh, a few committees regarding business development. First and foremost, uh, the planning board uh, this month approved uh, the application uh, for our uh, for where Verjus is. It's now will be a mixed development. Uh, there'll be a pub on the first floor, and then uh, there'll be apartments on the second floor. Uh, if you haven't taken a chance to go down Springfield Avenue, you're missing out. 
uh, it is becoming really uh, a gym. And uh, the development, thoughtful development that's happening across those 2.2 miles of personality is very evident. We opened a cannabis uh, in the last month as well. It's doing very well. Um, so uh, shop Springfield Avenue, shop strong, shop local. Uh, you won't be disappointed. So more to come, but uh, we continue to move forward with that. And not to be outdone, uh, we still are very uh, uh, bullish on uh, um, Irvington Avenue. Uh, myself and Mr. Luca and Mr. Palmer will be meeting with key stakeholders in June. Uh, to talk about the ongoing county project, which is a beautification uh, infrastructure project, which is going to make Irvington Avenue one of the most beautiful corridors in all Essex County. Also connects with South Orange and what they're doing with their master plan as well as Irvington. And to that point, as we talked about in our C meeting, um, we talked about the, the master plan. Uh, Ms. Bishota, the chair of the planning board, will be moving forward uh, with kicking off our subcommittee uh, with uh, the sub chair of the planning board in June. So more to come there. We're very excited about where we're going from an economic development perspective. Um, I want to touch on a couple of things related to uh, uh, public uh, safety, but not as many as Mr. Olympic as our chair. Uh, but first, I just want to say it was great uh, to see Officer Smith tonight uh, and also Officer Clayton and Vincent last month. You know, um, everyone talks about, you know, July 16 and all those things, but you know, when you look at our table, uh, we've uh, turned over or we've added, if you will, 25% of our police department has changed uh, since that time uh, in terms of their start date. And, and the, the quality of officers that we're bringing in are community focused, um, are, are compassionate and, and really want to serve our community and be part of our community. So all of us collectively are very excited about uh, the direction and the, 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 uh, the leadership and just the movement that we are, um, you know, have the honor to be a part of um, here in the Township of Maplewood in relation to our police department. Um, and with that being said, uh, you know, I have to, since Vic didn't do it, I have to, you know, I had to have the honors of, of sharing my screen. It's, one of us has to do it, right? It's, 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 it's a tradition here. So uh, I will go ahead and share one of my screens. And um, I'm going to share number one. And what I want to talk about is that, speaking of our police department, uh, this Saturday at, at 11 to 12.30 or 1 to 2, uh, our police department is having the easy ride, bike safety presentation, safe bike skills course, and community ride. So if you look here, if you go to uh, maplewoodpd.org slash events, please sign up. As you can see here, there's more information. But it's just another wonderful event uh, that you know our police department is doing by being community centric. So uh, please, if you have time, uh, Saturday, I hope the weather will be nice. Please come on out and, and enjoy uh, the camaraderie uh, with our department and learn some safe bike skills. Um, the month is not over, so we're still in API month, and I wanted to highlight a couple of things that are occurring uh, this weekend, uh, including here uh, the hula, which is happening this Saturday in South Orange from 3 to 5 p.m. Please come out and join us. It should be a wonderful time and a wonderful experience for all. There have been many great events. Uh, you know, our townships collectively have done a phenomenal job, you know, with Black History Month, Women's History Month. And you know, we're looking forward to what's going to happen uh, with Juneteenth as well as Pride. But we're still having some wonderful events here with AAPI. Uh, we saw the, uh, uh, the Dragons. Uh, my colleagues, all of us were out there uh, a couple of Fridays ago and really enjoyed a phenomenal experience uh, there in the village. And then also continue on that theme, AAPI, the Holly Fest is coming up as well this Sunday at noon. So there you go, two wonderful events. The Festival of Colors is really cool. If you've never seen that before, it's kind of a musty event. So join me and my colleagues this weekend at these two great events uh, and continue to celebrate um, AAPI month. But uh, if, you, if you're gonna wake up early Saturday morning, uh, and before you head on over to South Orange in the afternoon, I would advise you come on out and join me uh, and, and um, uh, President Column. We're going to be out there uh, doing a run walk together for uh, some of 5K, and this is for men. Uh, it's going to be a great event. I'm looking forward to it. We'll be out there. Uh, the website's there for about 8.30 in the morning. So grab your cup of coffee, grab your running shoes or your walking shoes, and come out and join us. It'll be a fun time had by all. All right, I'll stop sharing my screen. 
Awesome. So these are some of the events that are coming up here in our community and we'd love for everyone to come out. Um, and last but not least, uh, I know that Liz mentioned Memorial Day, so please join us on Memorial Day, 11 o'clock. Uh, it will be a thoughtful uh, event. It won't be as robust as previous years with the parade, uh, but it won't be as constricted as it was last year when we were at the height of COVID. So as we continue to open up, we want to start to go back to some of those uh, fun traditions uh, where we pay great respect for those who served our country. And last but not least, I just want to give a shout out to the uh, Columbia High School uh, Cougar football team that's having their banquet tonight or just finished up over at Pickett's. Uh, I had the honor to go to uh, as many games as possible, mostly away because of COVID. And I, I tell you, it's one of the best teams I've seen in years. Uh, they had some amazing wins, some tough, tough losses in terms of the scoreboard, but the character of that team was phenomenal. Phenomenal and uh, shout out to, to all the, uh, the young gentlemen on that team for really being champions. So uh, sorry I couldn't make it tonight, but I just wanted to give you a shout out and that goes for all of our athletics as well. So uh, that concludes uh, my report uh, for this evening. And now we'll move on in our agenda. Uh, and the first uh, discussion item is mine, which is the Juneteenth flag raising. So in that regards, uh, just to give you a little background, Juneteenth is, is now being uh, celebrated again on a broader scale. I think some of the events of last year uh, brought us uh, a little more awareness and recognition of the importance of the Juneteenth holiday. Uh, and because of that, uh, we have been contacted uh, by uh, the uh, NAACP uh, of the Oranges and uh, and they would like for us, the Township Maplewood, to join other 10 municipalities uh, and on Juneteenth, on June 19th, uh, raise the, the, the new Juneteenth flag. Um, South Orange will be having a formal event. And as you know, we do share these type of events so that we're not kind of cannibalizing each other. So they'll have a more of a formal event. Uh, that will be on Wednesday, uh, the 16th of June. But uh, what I would like to do is uh, get um, permission, if you will, from my colleagues that we would raise, this, raise the Juneteenth flag and join the other 10 municipalities ourselves uh, on June 19th. And so that is uh, what's up for discussion and just wanted to get uh, everyone's opinions on if you're okay with that. I'm okay with that. Absolutely. Awesome, okay, great, thank you. Um, so now we'll move on to agenda item number two, which is a, the, the waiver on the online e-check fee. Uh, if you remember last year, um, we waived uh, the fee at that time was a dollar and five cents uh, because of COVID. Uh, it was transferable to your, uh, your, your third quarterly tax payment. The thought process was uh, to keep people uh, from uh, physically interacting with the building, keeping them safe from COVID. Um, granted that, you know, this didn't take away, take away the fee for the debit card, but it was a, a way to address the, the other fee. Now the fee now is $1.95, it's, it's higher. Uh, and so I guess I'm looking to see if we have an appetite to continue uh, in that uh, mindset and actually uh, either waive the $1.95 fee or if you sign up for auto payments of your, uh, your taxes, then we'd waive the fee that way. So it's up for discussion. Mr. Kloje is with us this evening as well to provide more context if anyone needs it. I yield the floor. I support it. Anyone else? Everybody else? I didn't see I the thumbs up there. Yes, no? Yes. Roger, do we need a, a, a motion? What did we do last year, Mr. Kolodje? How did well, you how did you waive it? If we know that the consensus is to continue it, we'll prepare a resolution for the next meeting and uh, we'll continue it through the rest of uh, 2021. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you, Mr. Desiderio, and thank you, Mr. Kloje. All right, I'll now yield the floor to, to Mr. DeLuca to talk about the tree ordinance. Thank you. And I am going to uh, share something, believe it or not, Nope, wrong thing to share. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So um, the, there we go. 
engineering public works and planning committee we we had uh, a good discussion a couple of meetings ago about the tree ordinance uh, our professionals from the department of public works came and said the ordinance really isn't working we had citizens come and say it isn't working so we made some changes to it essentially uh we just clarified uh, the the director of the Department of Public Works is the person or that person's designee because we had some outdated positions here. So it's just easier to have the director or designee because we'll always have a director. Um, so the, the most important thing here is we now have said that uh, this part here where uh, someone who wants to um, oh, I'm sorry, this is not it. This was this is another part. This was a request from from uh, Mr. Kittner. Right now, we to take, to take down a public tree, we have to give two weeks notice. And he asked that in lieu of the notice, we could get the property owner to sign a waiver prepared by the DPW. Because sometimes we're talking to people and they want the tree down, we can get them to sign that waiver. And we don't have to go through a mail process for two weeks. So that's on the public side. We also increased that if you violate the uh, anything with a public tree, we changed it from fifty dollars to a thousand dollars, and we took out uh, tying a horse to a, a public tree. We don't get many of the horses tied anymore to our trees in Maplewood. Um, and then on private trees, uh, this is where we did the the major piece here, and this is what I was talking about that. Um, in 2012, we eliminated the need for the applicant to notify their neighbors and said that it would be on the DPW to notify neighbors <clears throat> once a permit is issued. And that has become unworkable. So we've gone back to requiring the applicant to provide uh, a certified letter that the applicant uh, has requested a, a removal permit. Uh, this is similar to what we require for a planning board on a variance or a board of adjustment on a variance. And we've also followed the uh, idea of having a completed application so that, that once you have a completed application, then the various time periods start to run. So this is, so if I wanna tear down a tree I have to fill out all this stuff here and make sure I say the address, show them that I own the tree. Uh, I have to provide the names of all my abutting neighbors. And then I have to provide proof that I sent them a certified letter. Um, and that's, that's important. And then once that application is deemed to be complete, then there's a period of 10 business days to determine uh, if the application, uh, from the determination the application is complete, to provide the, uh, either the permit or the denial. And then we've changed the permit. And then, so we've eliminated the department's responsibility to notify all budding property owners. We've changed the permit fee from a $25 fee to $100 per tree. It actually was a little bit of a, uh, a, a sort of a perverse thing because we said it was 25 to take down one tree and if you want to take three trees, it was $50 and four was only 75. You can clear cut for $75. So now we've said it's $100 per tree. <clears throat> we've left all the emergency uh, things here. We said that if in the emergency, they have to get prior uh, or electronic notification to the director. They can send an email to the director and say, my tree fell or is falling on my house. We need to get it down and then the director is notified. And then there has to be a notice 10 days after the threat is resolved as to why they took the action. And um, if that's the case, then that $100 fee would be removed. We clarified the appeals process. We don't have an environmental subcommittee anymore. We have Sustainable Maplewood. Uh, Mayor Frank uh, remembers that he and I heard a tree appeal uh, I'm from Midland Boulevard. It is such a joy. Uh, but so it'll be the, uh, the two members, two township committee members of Sustainable Maplewood Committee. And then we um, increased the violations. 
Uh, we changed it from 1,250 to 2,000. Uh, we also added that the penalty is to be assessed individually against the property owner and the tree remover, removal contractor. So it's not just the tree removal contractor, it's also the property owner. And then lastly, uh, so that's if, if they violate any provision. And then we added a section that if they are denied a permit and still don't take down the tree, uh, we said a, a fine of $5,000. Subsequently, I've been told by um, Mr. Desiderio that we can't do more than $2,000. That's a state law. Is that right, Mr. Desiderio? Uh, yes, Mr. DeLuca, that is correct. Okay. So this is what was sent out to you before. Um, and this is uh, what we're proposing uh, to put on the agenda at the, at the June meeting for um, approval. Additionally, uh, there, let's see if I can find that. Uh, we have some additions. Um, Ms. Adams found some information in a Nutley ordinance that said that when the when there's a, and maybe Ms. Adams, you could uh, talk about this. Well, basically it's um, to replenish trees that are taken down. And I think this is an important part that has come up in the past, but um, you know, we had, we'd never really acted on it. So I would just propose that for each tree taken down that, as you can see, um, when a tree, for each tree is taken down pursuant to the standards, in other words, following the law, the applicant shall plant a tree of at least six feet in height at the time of planting. So, um, you know, a decent sized tree to try to replenish um, what's lost. Another uh, aspect of this could also be, um, and I've seen it in other towns, but I don't have their ordinances in front of me, is if they don't want to plant on their own property or if they don't have the room or the space to allow them to plant or donate that tree to the township. Um, so that's something I, we could also add in there if, if everyone agrees. Okay, so that would be one thing that we would, we think we need to have some clarity here that if we, you are required to replant a tree, it has to be at least six feet. And I think what's being recommended, you know, uh, sometimes you don't wanna put it on your property so we can have a tree fund. Uh, and then, we did get some comments from uh, Mr. Profeta today. Uh, he gave some, uh, the first two are really clarifying uh, and I think good suggestions. We now say uh, the tree removal permit has been requested, but really because we've changed it to, a, you have to have a complete application. It really is, will be requested. So I think we should change that, those words to will be requested in this. And then he, he identified a typo. Uh, and then four and five are more substantive. He suggested that we add um, that the in, in determining whether or not to grant a permit, the uh, director or designee determine if there's any weakness in the disease that can be adequately addressed by uh, pruning a portion or removing a portion of the tree as opposed to the whole tree. I think that's a good good language to put in there. It just makes the uh, DPW think one more step uh, before granting a removal permit that can there be a partial removal or some other kind of pruning. And then lastly, um, he's suggesting that uh, the director um, provide the re reasons, both what we say reasons for the denial, and then he's also suggesting reasons for the approval. And I think that is a good standard because they are making a judgment as to whether or not uh, a permit should be issued or denied. And there should be a reason for either of those actions. So I know it's a lot to, to think about. Um, I don't know where folks are. We have two options. If you're comfortable with the changes and some of what we talked about tonight, we can draft uh, another document and take a look at it before June 1st and introduce it on June 1st, or we can have it for discussion again on June 1st. Uh, I will say there's a sense of urgency from the DPW because we're getting a backlog in tree requests. And right now the onus is falling on 
the DPW to do all these notifications and it's just creating a, a lot of work that they can't keep up with. I think we should try to get it on for introduction on June 1st and, and final later in June if we can. Yeah, I agree. I only had two questions and one was um, in 227-1, the designee, um, if we we're gonna define that more, uh, who that is, is that gonna be a township official? Uh, is it, you know, who is, how are we defining right there? Designee? That's, the de that's the director or the director's designee. So we can just change that to director's designee. Okay, cool. And then I did red flag the 5,000. I wasn't on board with that. I thought that was way too high. I'm glad to hear that Roger found something that- Well, in. Roger wanted 10,000, right, Roger? Oh, that's extremely too high. I think that's <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> well. Um, but the, the CAPS 2K um, for 227-12A and 227-12B, then I'm okay with that. Um, the only part too, you know, like it's great to try to replace a tree or remove a tree, but like, I'm just thinking about like, I'm already spending all this money to move, remove a tree. Like now I'm adding more cost to the resident to add another tree in a six feet tree. I mean, I just bought two trees, um, at a nursery and they cost me 70 bucks and they're like this tall. So like now we're, in, we're increasing the, you know, this, we're pulling more money out the wallet of the taxpayer and the resident to add a tree. So I'm not too sure if I'm cool with that part. I think that's the least expensive aspect of what they have to do. The problem is that we've been um, losing a lot of trees and sometimes they're taken down unnecessarily. And the goal is to try to bring the canopy back that is Maplewood. And it's really tip, um, a typical thing for either a tree fund, they donate like $100 to the tree fund for the town to use in other towns, or this is probably the less expensive option because a six foot tree is only a little taller, well, a foot taller than I am, <laughs> but um, they're usually only a couple inches in diameter. So, so what I would suggest then, since we're increasing the prices of removing the trees, we take the variance of that and allocate that to buy the trees, then adding incremental costs onto the taxpayer. I disagree with that, but. I just don't wanna add extra costs to a taxpayer. I mean, they're already paying to remove their trees and not everyone can, you know, it's an affordable situation, so. So, so how, about we, how about if we, how about if we, we hold off on this thing because it says for each tree for which mitigation is required. We have nothing in our ordinance that says tree, a, a replacement tree is required. That's only if in case um, somebody orders them to replace trees like a developer. We've ordered developers to replace trees and stuff. So maybe we need a little more work on this, but let's not make the perfect the enemy of good. Let's come back and look at this uh, maybe in a, in a future clarifying ordinance and just go with what we have. I'm fine with that. I just, I'm just thinking about no, that. Okay. Well, so I'm, I'm fine with that then. So I want to just chime in here. Uh, so when, when this came up in uh, engineering public works, my concern was that the ordinance was possibly uh, too burdensome but I want to report back to the committee here and to the public who's still with us, if anyone is still with us, that uh, the director of public works indicated that this ordinance is better than what we had before and not burdensome. So they believe, they being the designee here, believe that this is a workable thing, that it's practical, uh, it's better than what we have right now. Um, I have one, Last question, uh, Vic, I didn't notice this before and I apologize. If you can share your screen again, and, or you may need not need to, you may know the answer off the top of your head. I didn't notice this before, but I noticed it now when you were going, walking us through it. Uh, the proof of ownership with private trees, um, is a survey the only proof of ownership? I think that would be a little bit onerous. Like, do you have to get a survey each time to show right. that? To no, it says such as. It says such as a survey. 
I see. What do we know? What other proof would be a deed acceptable? A deed. A deed. Okay. Is tax that bill. how about a tax bill? Tax bill. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was maybe um, the survey example would probably be, be in case it's not certain that it's on their property. Uh huh. Like right. it might, you know, it's on my property. No, it's on my property. You know. Yeah. Or, or municipal property. Got it. Got it. Okay. I Otherwise, I'm good with this. I think uh, I want to applaud uh, Mr. DeLuca, who's worked hard on this. Uh, Ms. Adams has worked hard on this. I know uh, former township committee member, Mr. Profeta, has been part of this effort too. Um, so yeah, let's let's move this forward. I, I, I think like with a lot of our ordinances, this one is very technical and it's going to require uh, a lot of education out there so that people understand what their responsibilities are. I have one more question. So actually in the ordinance, it talks about you have to get a written letter proving that you got um, approval for um, the houses that are, that are next to you, right? Is that both sides in the back or is it just both sides? Like how do we define Budding. Like, that definition of like, it, is it, how would you abutting. Abutting, abutting means everybody front, back, rear sides. Abutting. You, share, share, you share a property line. You share a property line. Okay. And if one of those three people say no, then you're saying that that property owner cannot remove the tree. That's what this says. No, 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 no. No, they can appeal it. They can appeal it. They can appeal it. it. Doesn't say no. It just gives them an opportunity to appeal. Does the resident who says no, do they have to give their rationale reason why they're saying no? Because not every neighbor is friendly, and they might just say no on just because to be, you know, to be unneighborly. Stating the reasons upon which the appeal is based. Yes, they have to say why they're appealing it, and they have to file it with the township clerk. No, not the, not the person removing the tree, the, the resident who said no to the person. Correct, yeah. correct. They have to file a written notice stating the reasons why the, what the appeal is based okay. on. So it can't be, I don't like my neighbor. Right. It has to be, you know, uh, it's the only shade I have in my background, back, backyard, it's the oldest tree on the block or whatever. Okay. I just have some flashbacks, Vic, from a couple of those. Uh... Yep, yep. Okay, thank you. I, I have I have some questions, Mr. DeLuca. Okay. Uh, in in uh, in two twenty seven eight a seven, evidence that all abutting property owners have received a certified letter. So if well, if I'm, someone I'm on the wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. Say, tell me which one again. Two twenty-seven, uh, eight. Okay, yeah, seven. Eight, seven. Evidence. Got it. Owners. Yes. Okay. So if I send out a certified letter and and someone doesn't claim it, and they never claim it, I can't ever qualify. No. When you get uh, the the um. So it should be sent to certified letter, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And with regard to the fines. Um, you have said in all of these that a fine not in excess of, okay, which I think for this is probably okay. I know we've been trying to make specific fines because this way people could pay them. But my concern is someone may come into the court with a sob story and the court may, if the fine is a not to exceed fine, say, okay, uh, I'm going to waive the fine or you're going to pay a $10 fine or whatever. So I don't know how strongly you want to be with regard to the fines. When we talked about it, I thought we, we thought we had to keep not to exceed in there. No, never. Oh, okay. No. You, I mean, so you could say a, fine not, a, a minimum fine of and not to exceed or something of that nature, but I, I leave that to your discretion. Because it give, this gives, and I'm not, and I'm not seeking to undermine the court by any matter, way, shape, or form. But there are different. You, you you come at it from different approaches, and the judges they are listening to somebody with a sob story, 
And if you want teeth to this, you, I'm just saying you may want to consider that. I see, I agree with that. I, I'm sorry, Roger. I didn't catch what you want us to consider. What are we changing? What language? Well, all of the fines say not to exceed a number. Right. And, and if that is the case, it gives the court discretion to effectively waive the fines. I see. Okay. So I'm wondering if you want to, as opposed to in many of our ordinances, what we now say is a first offense, X dollars, second offense, X dollars, et cetera. So I'm saying you may not want to do that here. You may want to leave that. Okay. But I'm simply saying that when you, when you say not in excess of, there's a great deal of discretion for the court. Yeah. And I've seen that discretion played out. So it would be nice if um, they could have, I, I agree with Roger. I'd rather not have a not to exceed. <coughs> the, 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 and, and as we talked about it, Roger, when we, we also discussed this, you know, sometimes the cost of a fine may be, you know, somebody who's, who's going over certain, developing something, a developer, not necessarily a resident, and they, they consider it a cost of doing business if it's too low. That 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 is true. Yeah, right. I would propose we have a penalty of two thousand dollars. Take the not to exceed out. If we want teeth here, then you're going to have to have, a, you know, a significant number. Because if if they go and they get a five hundred dollar fine, that's easy. Well, for some people, uh, I would say that's really well. well it's, <laughs> if if you really want your tree down, then you just pay the five hundred dollars. Fine. Right. Take the or, you go, or you go through the process. No, I mean, I, I think that there are going to be people who are going to make an honest mistake who can't afford that much. That's all. Agreed. Not everybody is a developer. Not everybody is going to do, you know, some of the things that we've all experienced. Some people are just honestly going to make a mistake, you know, um, and then, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess ultimately they the court can still have discretion, even if we say, Roger, what's the answer to that question? Like, if no. we say, then the court doesn't have discretion. They have right. to apply it. Right. Correct. It's a, like a minimum sentence. Right. This just goes go way back to those days when you get pinched, you know, don't pay that parking ticket, and then you get the next thing you know. Yeah. All right, so do you want to leave not to exceed? I would leave it. Yeah, I'm going to vote in favor of not to exceed. Yeah. Okay. It's on you, Greg. Okay. It's fine. And, and my oh, Greg, what do you do, what do you think? Because there's two Ooh. for one no, way. I'm, I'm for it. I'm for not to exceed. Oh, flipped. I'm okay. for moving this. <laughs> and so, not, not to exceed. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and my, and my last my last point is that I just want to make sure that I understand this correctly. The decision of the director or the director's designee is final. There's no appeal of that decision. Am I no, right? That, no, that's the that's the appeal process. So, Roger, are you saying if if they get denied a permit and then try to appeal? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, forgive me, but is is that in the appeals section? I don't. I don't know. It might not be. I think the appeal section just deals we, with we, the neighbors. Yeah, we struck. We struck any person aggrieved by the decision of the shade tree su supervisor. We struck that, and we said an abutting a property owner shall have a right to appeal. So we should does put that, back. Does the, that the, mean the applicant does not have a right to appeal? I, 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 I might be missing. Uh, I, guess, I guess the problem is we didn't want any person aggrieved because that could be anybody. You could live in union and say, I don't want Maplewood to tear trees down. And you're, I'm an aggrieved party. All right. So, we should, so if we put in app, the, the applicant or an abutting property owner, does yes. that solve it? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And then I think you, your suggestion of the decision uh, is, is appropriate because uh, even an app, this doesn't allow an applicant to appeal a denial the way it's written now. Right. And I think that's that's also got to be uh, an opportunity for an applicant who's denied by DPW to make an appeal that to appeal that. 
Right. So that we have to rework that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. That was all I had. Okay. So we've made enough sausage. Are we prepared to put this on June 1st? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's it on that. Thank you, Vic. Let's uh, move on to uh, talk about the cannabis. Okay. Um, so I shared this with you all uh, earlier that the new state law makes all makes our municipal ordinance null and void, and we'd have to be they have to be adopted to be effective, and then. If we take no action on by August 21st to either limit the number of cannabis establishments, blah, 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 location, um, then uh, we will lose the ability to control the destiny of our community for the next five years. So we don't know what the regulatory body is going to come out with you know, we, there's a cannabis regulatory commission that's making decisions right now. And my recommendation, uh, I give you a number of recommendations. Number one is that we readopt our ordinances. Uh, in particular, we have an ordinance right now uh, establishing the hours of operation or part of our ordinance establishes the hours of operation. And we made a deliberate decision about that and we ought to hold the apothecarium to that but right now we don't have an ordinance that does that so th so uh, we and we ought to look about our zoning ordinances and things like that so um, i would say we take a look at our ordinance and put that up for readoption number two that we adopt the sample ordinance of the new jersey state league of municipalities saying that we're not going to allow any cannabis operations in maplewood I know it's sort of counterproductive or, or counterintuitive to our position in favor of it, but we're really operating in the dark right now. And for us to have as much control over what's gonna happen going forward, we need to know what the state regulations are so that we can adopt local regulations that are best for Maplewood. So that would be my second recommendation. The third is that we set up a committee to start working on what are the things we want in our local um, local ordinances and keep an eye on what the state is proposing. And then I would just like to add one other thing that came up that I would like to refer to public safety, Mr. Lembrick, and that is we don't have an ordinance right now about no local cannabis use in our public parks or on our public streets or in our public places. We ought to have that. I spoke to the chief about that. He thinks that would be helpful. Well, it, it didn't used to be an issue because you used to not be able to do it anywhere. Right. So if we could put that on uh, on public safety for the next meeting to talk about. Yep, can do. Okay. So those are the recommendations. You know, otherwise we are we are going to. It's just going to happen. We're going to be allowed to have. Um, Let's see, here, here's an important part. We're not only talking about distributors like, I'm sorry, retailers like uh, the Apothecarium. We're talking about cultivator licenses, manufacturing licenses, wholesalers, distributors, retailers, and delivery. We are, we've already received a request from somebody who wants to be the delivery, get a delivery license. Do we wanna be in control of all these kinds of licenses and I would submit to you that if we do, we're best to say nothing, and then we can always go back once we decide what we want and change the ordinance. Is yeah. our only choice all or nothing? Uh, I guess we could pick and choose, but even if you if we just pick retailers, we don't we don't have any control over that. Do we really want three retailers within a couple hundred feet of on Springfield Avenue. That's well, great. but that's what I was saying. We don't, if we, if we, if, if it's not a yes or no, then we can use that subcommittee to, 
to figure out those those questions and that's the ordinance we pass we don't know that until the regulatory commission issues oh, but the thing you put up before is the number of retailers for example like you just said right like that's a conversation about you know just like we have for some other uses do we want it a certain number of feet from a school or a, a church or all those things that we do with other stuff so well our, our ordinance right now says you can't have one within a thousand feet of another right right so so i think your proposal vic is wise and i will support it tonight i think the narrative here is really important we're not saying that we're closed for business uh because clearly we're not we have a medical, a state-of-the-art medical dispensary in Maplewood. What we're saying is, in light of how all of this is set up right now, we are temporarily opting out so that we're not stuck with things that are not right for our community for five years. We can always opt in at any time as soon as our committee, which I also agree with, uh, figures out what's appropriate for our community what kinds of licenses and how far apart from each other and any restriction on the number of operators, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the commission is not going to get this to us in final form until October by best estimates. And I'm hearing that because, uh, because the League of Municipalities has freaked out a lot of communities with this opt out now pledge that they're sending to mayors and to us and to public health officers in the same community oftentimes a, a separate email um the commission is under pressure and they will be releasing next month some initial guidance although we're still not going to know everything that they're going to do uh and everything that's going to be legal so I do think that it's prudent for us to take a pause here, readopt our ordinances, which you know solidify the ATC and our dispensary and the zoning and all of that stuff, and take a pause, figure out what's right for our community, and uh, wait to hear from them and, and opt back in at that time. Uh, I, I, I don't think that we're saying we're close to cannabis this is wrong for us, and I and I frankly would like to um, use our legal eagle Roger Desiderio uh, to work on the sample ordinance that was provided by the league, which I think is a little bit harsh and uh, a scare tactic to communities. Uh, right. So that's my position. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's you know the key part here is controlling the narrative, controlling our environment. And if we don't opt out temporarily, we don't get to do that. You know, the fact that we have a medical cannabis place open for business and doing quite well already sends a message to the community that we are proponents of cannabis uh, at this time. But that being said, we need to control our environment and control our narrative. So since the regulations are not done yet, you know, we stay in and we're at the, you know, we're at the hands of, of, of Trenton. And we know already with, you know, they, when they put the tax on medical, they only let us cap it at 2%. So I think we, we do this, we're cautious and we go ahead and we opt out, we control the environment. I also think we can have a committee on a parallel that's monitoring what's happening. In addition to the individuals, I'd like to see someone from the planning board on that as well. So I would add someone from the planning board in addition to Roger and, and you, Vic, and Dean. Um, and I think that's the right thing to do. That's what's most prudent. So this is thoughtful because we're continuing to control the narrative and be progressive without putting us in a position where we're taking orders instead of giving them. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope, you know, if the, uh, you know, folks from other planets are, are looking at, you know, what form of 
government to use and they're considering democracy. They're, they're not looking at the way Trenton is, is handling marijuana as, you know, a representative of, you know, how our government works. Is, uh, you know, they're, they're really not, not doing a bang up job on this. Uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, and, and, you know, the, the way, the way this is forcing us to basically, you know, prohibit something that we want to allow so that we don't give up our options later. Uh, you know, it, it just seems very counterintuitive to me, but I also, it makes total sense uh, of why, you know, in this position, we have to do that. So I, I agree with, with the recommendations Mr. DeLuca made tonight, and it seems like we're all on the same page. Uh, but, you know, I just wanna just take a moment to uh, recognize the, absurd, the absurdity of this, but, uh, but here we are. You know, it's uh, another day in New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Lundberg. Okay, so Vic, I think we're good. I think we'll go ahead and move forward with this recommendation. Again, we are controlling our environment, the narrative, and it puts us in a position, um, higher ground as the regulations come out. Thank you. Good. I think when it gets out, it'd be nice to do some sort of PR that we're doing this just because the state screwed up and we have no choice, <laughs> you know. But it's but that our I agree, Nancy. Our intention, yeah. yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, I think that document that was shared it talks about if you opt out, we can opt out anytime, and so we can we can definitely share that narrative. I mean, again, it's about we're controlling our environment, that's right? Right, you know, and, and you know, and the opt out is not a permanent. You know, we, we know as Mr. Luca pointed out earlier, and as Diamond points out, you know, we we, we can opt back in. Right, and, and, and it's certainly our, our intention. You know, at least the five of us here, I think there's a consensus that you know, when the time comes, it's our community's intention to, you know, responsibly and intelligently, uh, and strategically opt back in in a way that makes sense for Maplewood. Yeah, absolutely. Because I don't want people. I don't want um, anyone to think we're opting out for the same reason some of our neighboring communities are opting out. Right. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. That narrative is on the street for those who opted out, and we're definitely not them. <laughs> okay. Great. So we're good. So um, let's move forward with this one, uh, and now we'll go to discuss an item number five: Jindy commuter parking fees. Uh, Mr. Daphnis. Thanks, Mayor. I'm going to kick it off to. Uh, Ms. Fritz in here, uh, you know, OEM coordinator DeLuca already discussed that we're looking into what our resumption of service is gonna be like. Um, we definitely know that people, some people have returned, are returning. There is increased volume at the train station every morning, uh, nowhere near where it was obviously. Uh, and there are some people who have asked for commuter parking pass. And I just bringing it here for discussion and queuing Ms. Fritz in to get an idea of where we are with respect to our policy uh, for those people who are gonna need a pass for the remainder of 2021. Ms. Fritz in. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Daffis. So um, we have sold uh, about 75 commuter parking passes um, thus far for 2021 we'd be at a thousand now. So that shows you that uh, the ridership is, is certainly down and you can just look across the street in the park and see that it's really wide open. But again, uh, 75 people uh, knew that we were beginning enforcement and they you know, came in and got their pass. So the only um, people are looking for a more reduced rate, right? But you know the commuter parking is 275, and that's um, what we've been charging. The only time I have any ability, according you know, to the ordinance, to cut the fee in half is at July one. Um, any of the specials that we had no longer apply because uh, we never started to run a jitney in 2021, and that was when the uh, township committee had uh, made the decision to offer the. Uh, 75% discount. Um, if you had a Jitney pass in 2020 that you didn't use, well, we didn't start again, like I said, to run a Jitney in 2021. So 
that was the only um, discount plan that we had, which we were not able to use anyway. Uh, you're on mute. Dean, you're on mute. Oh, hot damn. Uh, sorry about that. So if someone were to apply for a commuter pass in September, what would they pay? Okay, well, if they apply in September, they yeah. get it at half price because July 1 is uh, the, the half price rate would be uh, 275 uh, divided uh, in half. Right, but they've only, okay so that they can use for the rest of September, October, November, December, four months. Right. Well, July, July, August, September, October. No, Liz just said it's a half price in September. No, beginning. No, no, July 1. No, no, that's oh, not. okay. Liz said July. July 1. Got it. Okay. So it's half price for half a year. Are we comfortable with that? Yeah. You don't have to make any uh, dis any further decision on that. That's part of the ordinance, and that's what we do regularly. Right. Is that the same thing for a Jitney Pass? Jitney Pass goes to half price as well, J uh, July 1. I think we shouldn't discount anymore. I mean, we're getting hammered by this stuff, and it yeah. does cost us to put people out there to monitor this, so. Yeah, I agree, and, you know, I been along we we undercharge for our commuter oh, yeah. permit by compared to other municipalities by quite a bit already okay yeah. i'm good with that okay wanted to discuss it and open because people have tagged us about it in social media here and there so all right so the township committee just so i uh, know going forward uh we will uh remain at our current rate and uh, the only uh, reduction will be July 1 when uh, everything will go to half price. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Frisson. Thank you, Mr. Dathis. Um, actually, Mr. Dathis, you have the floor again. Discussion line number six. This should be quick, Mayor. I think Nicole Pivnik during public comment uh, earlier this evening, which seems like hours ago now, uh, put it uh, pretty well. She, you know, the, this legislation is in keeping with uh, positions that we have taken before in this area, resolutions actually that we've adopted and our advocacy uh, was definitely part of Essex County's decision to uh, end their, their ICE contract at their correctional facility and phase out uh, that contract. So, you know, this would just make it applicable statewide. It would apply to public and private uh, entities and their relationships with ICE, I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, and I'm hoping that you all support it. And if you do, I would ask that our township attorney, uh, Mr. Desiderio, memorialize this by resolution. And, and uh, once that is executed, send copies thereof to our state reps and to leadership in both houses of our state legislature. If you could just send me copies of the bills, Mr. Daffis. Certainly, certainly. Thank you. Can I just ask a technical question? Uh, there's a support of an A bill, and then it says five three three six one. Is that a I was, that should be that must be S. That's S. It should be S five three three one. That's the companion bill in the Senate. Yep. The Assembly bill and the Senate bill. Yep. Okay. Well, you should check that because that's a lot. That's a lot of numbers for a bill. Usually, it's yeah. only four <laughs> numbers instead of five. I have it up here. Um, yeah. I should be able to find it really quickly. I think I have it up here. Oh. But anyway, I will. I will definitely follow yeah, up. With send it to me. We'll check them. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of threw me off at the beginning of the meeting. I was like, "Oh, five, five. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Cool. All right, uh, Mr. Deluca. Discussion item number seven: update on affordable housing. Thank you. So one more time, here we go. So I just wanna go through our uh, affordable housing. We have the house, it's, uh, we're doing renovation. Hands is doing renovations right now. It should be done uh, by the end of the month. Um, next up, 
we have received about 1,400 respondents to the applicant or the advertisement and the flyers we put out there about people interested in purchasing a home and community grants and planning. They're now going to be uh, randomizing this 1,400 people. Uh, the top 10 families that qualified based on self-reported information. So they have to say how many people are in their family, what their family income is, where do they live? It has to be certain um, four, four counties in New Jersey. Uh, once that information is looked at, uh, then they pick those 10 families. They, they get contacted by community grants, planning and housing to see if they're interested in the purchase. If they are, uh, community grants, planning and housing and hands works with them to get a mortgage pre-approval and they have lenders willing to work with people to do this. Then at that point, uh, the community grants, planning and housing does a deeper dive and they verify all the reported information. So instead of just saying, what's your family income, then now the family would have to show uh, so many years of income and all that. Um, and then they work with those families to make sure someone's really ready to purchase the home. Then they go through the sale process. Uh, hands shows the, the homes to the families. Uh, they handle the sale. The family pays $206,562. Uh, Maplewood's going to provide assistance with the down payment. I think we our plan is to provide about ten thousand dollars in assistance. Then the family moves in their new home, and they live happily ever after. So, uh, we are we are moving ahead. This is a uh, you know a big project for us. We had uh, I had talked to you about our second home that we were going to go in partnership with uh, Iron Ore Development. Uh, that did not work out. We lost the property we were looking at. Iron Ore has now secured a three-bedroom condo that they are working to uh, move into the affordable housing category. And um, it's actually good for us because the Affordable Housing Board met last week and we agreed that we should hold off a little bit on moving on this second house. One of the reasons is we had a very good conversation at our meeting with folks from Essex County. And we're gonna see if there's a way that we could use our dollars and our trust fund and some of the county uh, money that they have to see if we can actually even do more homes. So that's something we're gonna to continue to talk about. If that works out, there's some issues with, are, are the is the eligibility for each program matched up? So we have to look at some of that, but, um, but right now we're not going to move on that second home. We do have until 2025 to meet that oblig obligation. So we have a, a you know a few years to to work on that. But uh, we're going to continue to do so. And then the last thing I just want to mention: we we had a question about the developer fees. We're having a meeting tomorrow, Mr. Desiderio, Mr. Decourt, and I, to talk about the uh, the process. And uh, we have a couple of developers in particular, we're gonna be sending invoices to for their development uh, required, the required payments to the trust fund. And that's it. Thank Can you. I just add one thing, Mr. DeLuca. Sure. With regard to the sale of the property on Franklin Terrace, there'll be a deed restriction, which will prohibit that owner from ever selling that for 30 years, for selling that house other than under the affordable housing program. So it's not something that the owner can flip for for uh, for um, uh, regular value. So it's always it's always bound, and that's how we get the the unit from affordable housing. So, just as an aside. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Desiderio, and thank you, Mr. Luca. Thank All you, right. Mr. Dacus. Okay. And Mr. Daps. I got no. I got it. I got what I got. What he sent me. Okay. All right, well, now we'll move on to discussion item number eight, which is fields. Um, what we heard tonight is the same thing that we've been hearing for too long at this point. Um, you know, it's been the voice of our community, the voice of families, parents, guardians, people who've lived here from 30 years to three months and everywhere in between. Uh, we've heard their frustrations, uh, their concerns about the safety of, of, their, of their children, 
uh, the lack of development opportunities uh, because there's a lack of the ability to play and have sports person personship. Uh, and frankly, just a disappointment about their quality of life in a township of Maplewood. And this is due to the quality of our fields. Um, the opportunity is now, I think, for us to address these issues, to listen to the voice of our community and start the process uh, to address these issues and move forward with a professional assessment of our fields with the goal of optimizing our fields. And that's inclusive turf. If that's the recommendation, then that's what we need to do. Um, you know, the time for balance in our community is now. We talk about a lot of issues. We've talked about leaf blowers. We've talked about restorative justice. Well, the fields that our kids play on is equally as important. One thing we've learned as elected officials, if an issue is important to our resident, the taxpayer, the voter, it should be important to us. You know, so what's timeless and what the fact, the fact of the matter is that every time it rains on a Thursday, we're canceling games or matches on Saturday. That's girls lacrosse. MSO softball, boys baseball, uh, men's lacrosse, ultimate frisbee, all of these rec programs of sports, which parents are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars are being basically truncated and resulting basically on the fields in which we're providing them. They're inadequate. And as some person said to me in an email recently, we should be embarrassed and I am embarrassed. I think we've, we've kicked this can down the road long enough. The, 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 the study, the DeHart project has failed. We dropped between forty dollars to $50,000 a year uh, in fees to fix a field after it rains once is unusable. So tonight I would like to uh, get, you know, move the authorization of a formal study of our fields, inclusive of DeHart and Maple Crest Park um, and all of our parks. So we can move forward and get a professional assessment inclusive of turfing DeHart Definitely looking at Maple Crest Park Field 3 and having that redone as well. So the floor is open for discussion. So, Mayor, what are you proposing? You're proposing that we, you're, you're seeking authorization for uh, our working with a consultant to, to study and come back with recommendations. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. A formal study of our fields, all of them, the art, Maple Crest Park, and I want them to take a good look and provide with an assessment inclusive. They think that the best resolution is turf field, then that's what we need to do. Turfing to heart to me makes a lot of sense. I'm 100% on board with that if that's what the study says. So I think it's time for a turf field in Maplewood. Yeah, so I, you know, ever since I started and I only have, I have the smallest tenure of the rest of you, uh, this has been a recurring issue. And um, I do think it's worth having another look. Uh, we certainly have uh, taken the other approach. We've hired consultants. We've spent 32,000, 36,000, 42,000 here and there since I've been on the committee three and a half years now. Um, and the result has always been the same. And maybe the time has come for us to at least be able to offer our residents one field of, that is sustainable play, uh, one turf field, um, if not more than one. Um, you know, I'm not interested in turning all of our parks into turf, obviously, but that's not what you're suggesting either, in fairness. But, but rather, you know, maybe DeHart is the one uh, that gets a lot of play. And, and that's the one we should focus on. Maybe it is part of uh, the Maple Crest field. I'm not sure we should probably take a look at it, but you know, there's no question that the equitable and sustainable access to outdoor recreation, athletics and play is a pillar of a healthy community. And while we work, as you said, on all the other issues that make our community healthy. Uh, this is one issue that we, we just, we've tried our best with other ways, but you know, we're failing and we're failing our kids and they're getting sprained and we're getting emails and you know, games are being canceled and there's absolutely no reason why uh, that should be happening. And you know, it, it is also an issue of equity as well, because while some of the parents who testified tonight are parents of means who were able to provide 
for their kids elsewhere, you know, privately. Um, what about our other parents that don't have those means? And why aren't their tax dollars uh, going to this? So um, I would support our having a, a deeper dive on this and, and uh, looking at possible turf at DHART or whatever the recommendation is from uh, said consultant. Thank you, Mr. Daphnis. Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to go next. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Lindbergh. Um, so, I mean, first I'll just say that, you know, I, I voted, you know, long before I was on the committee, uh, you know, I voted in favor of, of turf as a, as a resident, as a voter in 2008. Uh, and, you know, since then, uh, my opinion has only grown stronger uh, for, for two reasons. Uh, one, I feel like the technology around turf has only gotten better. Uh, it's only gotten safer and it's only gotten uh, environmentally better. A lot of the concerns that people raised in terms of scientific and environmental questions people had about turf going back 12, 13 years ago, uh, you know, have since been resolved through improvements in technology uh, and through increased scientific study. Uh, you know, so I think that, you know, the, the, the quality of turf that we'd be able to put in uh, for a reasonable cost at this point uh, would be far superior and have much less uh, threat to our environment and to the safety of, uh, of our young people and other people who would use the, the fields uh, than, than a lot of people were legitimately concerned about uh, back when this debate was raging, uh, you know, now nearly a generation ago. Uh, the other thing is we've, you know, we've seen uh, over these past 12, 13, 15 years, whatever it's been, uh, you know, we've seen the quality uh, of our fields continue to deteriorate. And, you know, and I've worked closely uh, both here in Maplewood and also with uh, colleagues, fellow elected officials, uh, you know, the athletic director at the high school, members of the board of education, uh, recreation directors in both townships, trustees over in South Orange, uh, some of my colleagues here tonight, uh, when we put together the, the field user fees, when we talked about how we're gonna spend those user fees, uh, when we've worked with our field consultants, uh, you know, the fields uh, in these communities in Maplewood and South Orange, and particularly some of our fields in Maplewood, uh, you know, they just, they just get too much use. Uh, they've been too beat up over the years. Uh, they just, they can't recover. Uh, we have drainage issues and, you know, DHART, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, there were the best intentions over there and people have uh, put a lot of effort in and we've certainly put a lot of money into that field, uh, but we're just, we're not seeing the results from there that, that I think uh, anyone hoped for. And uh, I, I think we need to figure out a better solution uh, because what we're doing now, you know, we're spending too much money uh, and we're, we're just, uh, you go around to other communities uh, in this area and, you know, we just, we don't, we don't have the facilities uh, and our residents uh, deserve better and our community deserves better. And, um, you know, you know, where people are paying, certainly paying A plus taxes here and, you know, they deserve A plus services and, and A plus um, facilities. And, and by and large, I think we do deliver on that, but this is, this is an area where I think we, we definitely do not. Uh, so I think we need to look at this and I think turf may be uh, part of the solution. I think, you know, obviously Maple Crest, uh, particularly field three is an area we have to address. And I don't know whether the turf is the answer there, but uh, Mr. Toluca mentioned earlier that we need to look at drainage issues at Maple Crest overall. And, uh, you know, we're going to be putting in the, the spray park, you know, potentially replacing a tennis court. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of things at Maple Crest Park. And, you know, in a way, those new uh, things we're doing over there may present an opportunity to, uh, you know, it's, it's a small space. So we have to Jenga a lot of, uh, a lot of things and, and Tetris a bunch of things into into things in a, you know into a small space and 
and hopefully the, the whole thing doesn't tip over. Um, but it may present an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, to, to maybe solve some of those problems, you know, drainage and otherwise. Uh, but I think, you know, whether it be Dehart, whether it be Maple Crest, whether it be Memorial, uh, we need to we need to address the quality of the fields uh, for the long term. And we, we've heard tonight from just some of our residents uh, that regularly reach out to you, Mr. Mayor, to me and, and to I'm sure the rest of our colleagues here on the committee and have been doing so for years. And and I just I, I don't want them to have to continue to do so for years going into the future. I, I think we've got to address this. Uh, you know, I, I think we can't we can't feel bound to a referendum vote from 13 years ago uh, where people voted against turf. I think too much has changed. I think, you know, uh, a lot of the residents have changed. A lot of the technology has changed and, uh, and a lot of the facts have changed. So I, I think uh, we need to deal with the facts we've got now. We need to deal with the fields we have now. The fields we have now aren't cutting it. So I think we need to, uh, we need to take steps to get fields that will. Uh, so I, I support this and, uh, and I'll vote in whatever way I can over the next uh, seven and a half months to move this forward. So Mr. Mayor, that's what I've got, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Member. Anyone else like to speak? So I'm not clear on the study part. Do we know where that's going or where, I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. Um, my two biggest hesitations with turf is environmental and i don't know that i'll be at i hear a lot of bad i tonight's first time i heard any you know proposed positives or changes um so i'm willing to look at that aspect of it my biggest issue is our parks are super small and they're not just playing fields so you know Putting a turf in Dehart Park eliminates any other use other than organized sports on that area in such a small park. And the same is true for Maplecrest, which has already got so many recreational uses and fields. So, um, you know, I'm not necessarily in favor of turf. I need to be convinced with scientific evidence for the environmental issues I have with it, the runoff and, and the plastics and the that it's really bad for kids playing on it as well um, for their health. Um, so, but but the issue with the size of the parks and, and at putting turf in um, for organized sports as opposed to the, the regular being able to run on grass when we're so paved and we're so tight, densely populated um, is a big concern of mine. Um, also, we've tried and failed to get um, the school district to, you know, not overuse our fields that I was at those meetings with Mr. Lumbrick and there's so much use on our fields. It's not just because we don't try to take care of them. It's because they're overused and they never can rebound. It's like running every day, a marathon every day and not be not taking a day to, to give your body a rest. So um, those are my thoughts, but I'm happy to see what kind of uh, study might be available um, or consultant might be available to evaluate all the fields. But those are my two issues, the main ones. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Mr. Dulico. So back in when we had this raging debate in 2007, 2008, maybe even earlier, uh, I was one of four township committee members that voted for the turfing of the Dehart field. Um, and, and just so we're all clear, we need four votes to do this because it requires a bond ordinance. So it can't be three, two, it's got to be four, a minimum. That is correct. And, um, so that is what the vote was. Now, somebody asked the question, you know, does the referendum in the past dictate the future? The answer is no. The only thing that happens is that when we pass the bond ordinance, the, 
residents have the ability to overturn it. And that's what happened. Well, yes. Yes, I mean, it, it, it gets put on, it gets put on the ballot for the next general election and then right. there's a general vote on it, so. Right, and that's what happened. Yes. Is that the, the folks went and got a petition which stayed the bond and they, once they got approval and there's a requirement based on how many people vote in the primary, uh, in the uh, last general assembly election and all this kind of stuff. So, um, I would be in favor of turfing DeHart Park again. To be honest, I think we're wasting our time doing a study. We should just do it. If we got the votes, we should just do it. We should not study whether or not we need it. We should study what's the best one to get and how much is going to cost. Because we're just wasting time. And uh, everything that we've tried so far hasn't really worked. But I want to raise the same thing I raised last time. The, you know, we, we throw around equity, we talk about all this. Um, this is the only green space for the one census track in town that's predominantly people of color. And we're changing the green space to plastic. And it's primarily for folks outside that census tract that's going to use it. And I'm okay with that because it's it's really a sports area. We built the basketball court there. We have the tennis court there. We are actually now even have the senior building there. So it's become a much more of a complex. And I'm okay with that. But I do think we have to think about other ways that we can protect and create more green space in that neighborhood whether it's pocket parks, whether it is uh, some intensive tree planting there, but something that we're going to do that at the same time that we're solving this problem of sports field, that we're addressing um, the reduction of greens, green grass in that densely populated areas where most of our homes don't have a lot of green space even to have a catch. So I'm in favor of it. I think we have to work out the details. And I would urge us, if we've got the votes to do it, we should figure out how to get it done and not spend a lot of time playing around with studies because Mr. Lembrick will be off before that study gets in front of us. Thank you, Mr. DeLuca. Mr. Gimes. We want to move forward. Um, so functionally, all you would need to do to committee Mr. Luca's recommendation would be to authorize me to seek out an engineering firm that designs parks. I would find one, get your proposal, give you a proposal, because that's what you would need to do first: hire an engineering firm that does these things and designs them. They would create the bid. They would do a design, create the bid specs, get it out to bid, seek bids, get you the bond ordinance ready. You know, all in one time. So really, the first step is an engineering firm. I'm, I'm moving. I'm I'm moving. Well, okay. I, can, I, can I ask a question first, Mr. Messer? Mr. John, so, you know, but, you know, one of the things Mr. Lucas said is we want to figure out, you know, what is the best turf? You know, what, you know, what are the safety concerns? What are the environmental concerns? I think we do want advice on that. I think we, we don't just want bids to come in no. and then, you know, and then have to sort of, you know, because you know, then it's like we have to take the lowest bid and we have to, you know, I, I think, I don't think we want to choose this blind or we want to get stuck with just who's the lowest bid. I think we want to figure out what we want. Uh, yeah, they, so is, is, is that what you're talking about? I, 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 when, when the mayor was talking about a study, I think that, you know, it's not so much, I don't want to study whether we need it. I want to study what our options are. And I think that's what Mr. DeLuca was getting at is, you know, let's let's figure out what our options are and get some advice on this. So then we can decide, you know, are we going to move forward? You know, do we have four votes to move forward on that? And, and if I'm if I'm misrepresenting anyone's position, I'm sure they'll correct me. But Mr. Johns, assuming that that's the way we want to move forward, is that consistent with what you just set forth? Uh, somewhat. So if, if it were that way, then you would just to go back to the very initial comment of the mayor to just hire someone to kind of do that study. But if 
following Mr. DeLuca's, or at, at least as I understood his thought process, um, we would hire that engineering firm. Part of that would be exactly what you described, but another part would be doing design and bid specs. Now, at the same time, you know, simultaneously, you have to do a bond ordinance. So the initial call with that, you know, engineer would be, give me a, an estimate, a very loose estimate based on your thoughts here. And we have to do a bond ordinance kind of at the same time that study is going on. So there wouldn't just be bids coming in until a bond ordinance is in place because you can't go out to bid until funds are available. So if I made that seem like it was going to start happening sooner, that, that's on me. Um, so all of that really would be combined in one, but it is kind of the chicken egg scenario because you do need the consultant that's you know not cheap to start designing this uh, park for if you're talking about the heart. You know, if you're talking about Maple Crest, I know the one field, you know, that might be something you want to kind of think about, you know, a little further. But if the heart's the seems to be the issue that everyone agrees upon at this moment, then that would be the process. Well, Maple Crest, you can't do anything until we solve the flooding. Exactly. Yeah. So that, can, that's that's in process just, now. Just, just to clarify, Mr. Jones. So last time, the people who were proponents of this were people who were trying to sell us their turf. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is a enter into a professional contract, which isn't for public bidding. It's just yeah. we, a professional engineer who mm -hmm. has experience in evaluating and developing these synthetic turf fields mm -hmm. that can come back to us and say, here are the five products out there. This we think would work best, or here are the two products that would work best. Here's the range of expense, you know, the cost and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first step. Yes, they, that's exactly what I want. Right. Yeah, we could, it would be passed the same way you passed the professional service agreements tonight for engineering. So. It's sort of like the library architect where they work, you work on design, schematics, design, and then once you give them the go ahead, then they do the construction documents and all that. That's sort of the second stage. We want the schemat. We want the sort of idea of what it would cost, what it would look like, what's the stuff out there, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I would have them. I would reach, seek someone out and have them kind of do a proposal in phases, just as you described. Thank you. And then with each phase, you wanted to move forward. It would just require you saying yes, it's okay to move forward. Okay. So what motion do you need tonight to get this get this moving? Uh, I mean, uh, just. I think you verbal authorization. Pass a motion. Pass a motion to to retain a an expert to prepare uh, a phased in report. Okay, on the feasibility of turfing, uh, D Hard Park, and the cost associated with it, including the various types of turf that might be available. I think I've summarized it. Yeah, that I, that's that's the motion there, as Mr. Desiderio. On the environmental respects to each product that's there. That's being proposed, yes. all those, and drainage issues, and the life of the field, because right now it's like 10 million for 10 years. It's a lot of money. Well, in fairness, we want to get the estimate first. Yeah, the estimate first. Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to second it? I'll, I'll second, second it. it. Yeah. All right. Um, Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll. Sams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor McGee. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzman. Mayor, can I say one more thing about what some of the comments earlier about Cheswitz Field? I think people need to realize that that's private property. That belongs to South Orange. Even though it's in Maplewood, that belongs to South Orange. And Maplewood cannot do anything there to improve it to all we can do is enforce code. And we have done that because of issues of, they don't keep it clean and we've had prob police problems there and stuff. But I would su suggest that all those folks who talked about Cheswitz tonight should go to South Orange and talk to them about their field, which is located in Maplewood. Tell them Victor Lucas on you. That would be fine. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, Vic, because we get that question a lot. Yeah. A lot of the complaints are about that field over there. We just don't have jurisdiction over it. And in, fair, and in fairness, a lot of the debris associated right next door to it, abutting it, is Board of Education property, Correct. which is very poorly, poorly maintained. 
And that's where a lot of the garbage is. That's the, the, ma the maintenance of the field is South Orange, but the debris and all of that, a lot of that comes from, from the Board of Education property. So, um, you know, but I can tell you, and the mayor knows because he was involved, there were complaints that went and, and there were improvements made, right, Mayor? That's uh, correct. Because of South Orange and the Board of Education. So there have been some improvements to it. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Desiderio. Okay, we're gonna move on to our agenda item number 20, our consent agenda. Um, I'm looking for a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move items one through 20 on the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, Mayor, who's gonna have that job after, after seven and a half months from now? I know, right? <laughs> we're gonna miss that. That'll be a fun one. Uh, Ms. Fritzen, please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Lembert? Yes. Mayor McGee? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. Uh, we're now on agenda item number 21, public comment on any subject matter, Mr. Waltz. Mr. Mayor, I don't have anyone at this time. Awesome. We will uh, close the first comment. <laughs> or hopefully in three minutes, Nick. <laughs> thank, thank you, Nick. All right. Uh, seeing no one, we'll close our public comment, and I'll now take a motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Aye.